and then scored on a four-yard touchdown run. That game is knotted up 8-8. Eight to eight. And I believe last year, uh, St. B knocked off Erie Prophetstown with a last-second field goal. So mm. those two teams played a tight game last year, and uh, so far it's uh, turning out to be the same thing. And actually we have a new update, uh, a touchdown pass for St. Bede. 156 to go in the opening period. The uh, Bruins lead 15-8 to eight over Erie Prophetstown at the academy. So uh, we'll have St. Bede homecoming game uh, later in the year, as we always do on WLPO. Sure. Yeah, and I remember last year, I believe St. Bede did have a, uh, a decent kicker out there, so that was another <laughs> weapon they had. Um, I believe he graduated. So, you know, today they've got one two-point conversion, and it sounds like an extra point. Yep. So um, we'll see what uh, they do against e EP tonight. Yeah, it would be a nice way if St. B could start out 2-0. Uh, and oh. Of course, Princeton over on 99.3 WAJK rolled to another win last night over Orion. They are 2-0 and oh on the season. And uh, the Hall Red Devils with Randy Teeman back mm. for a second go around, looking to turn Hall back around. And uh, Hall at home tonight taking on Monmouth Roseville, who's uh, got a very good team this year. Uh, we'll look for updates of that game. And you can hear it on 96.5 The Wolf with uh, Lucas Burris and Jace Eustace on the call. And didn't uh, Hall uh, co-op with Putnam County? Did yeah. Did I hear that correctly? Yeah, so you did, you and that's a, that's a nice story little, in our uh, area. Putnam County players are get the opportunity to play, um, which they probably may not have if right. they would have not done this co-op. So it's, it's helped both schools because, like you said, Putnam County kids who wouldn't have been able to play football can't play football, and it helps Hall, who was struggling with numbers, yes, which a lot so. of schools are. And I know they did a survey last year of uh, Putnam County students, and mm -hmm. I think – over a dozen kids would go out for football. So uh, there's that many, if not more, um, to have that extra amount of kids. Yep. And as you know, Mike, following high school sports, Putnam County yep. are always uh, have great groups of these, uh, have great groups of yes. athletes and kids yep. and very competitive. So yep. that's a nice addition for Hall High School for sure. Yeah, you know, obviously, you know, you get another extra 10, 15 kids out. Um, you know, injuries happen in high school football. And, of course, with this, you know, with – you know, COVID and whatnot, you never know what could happen with that. So anytime you get the opportunity to add, you know, that many players to a roster, it's only going to help. Both teams heading off the field as we're about 15 minutes away from the kickoff here. The Metamore Band, I saw, was uh, heading towards uh, the field. Yeah, I think they're over, uh, what is that, the oh, north they're over side? the end zone, yep. I don't know direction, so I'm assuming that's the uh, I think north that's the south, right? Because we came basically directly from the north. Uh, yeah, because the sun set in front of our face. So, <laughs> <laughs> Got to get the compass, trust yep, the compass I, out here. I do not know directions, thank you. So, uh, yeah, LP will be going north to south. And uh, Cavaliers with a nice contingent. Looks like they even have a student section uh, on the north end of the bleachers across the way. I'm guessing that's students. Yeah, on the, well, uh, like you said, it's not all that far. It's, not, it's a pretty easy drive yeah. down here to Metamora, so... It's great to see support by the students uh, to see their uh, Cavs play. Again, the Cavaliers will be uh, traveling the next three weeks, tonight in Metamora, next week at Woodstock, and then at Plano before getting back home week five against Morris. So well, Let's see how many students we have next week at yeah. Woodstock. I'm going to guess the student <laughs> contingent is going to be not so high. I'm going to guess. I could be wrong, but you know we'll see. Woodstock North. It'll be my first ever trip. Now, last year I talked about trying to get up there early enough to see the Groundhog Day stuff. We did not make it. In fact, well, then that, and it was later in the season last yes. year, so it was dark Darker, by the time we right. got up there. And it was nice to see a former LP uh, athletic yeah. director at uh, Woodstock. In fact, uh, Chris Kirkpatrick, mm -hmm. who was an LP athletic director for a year or two, uh, a couple of years yeah. ago before Mr. Lee or Dan Lee came on, uh, he is now at uh, Woodstock doing the athletic director duties. So we'll see if uh, Chris makes the trip to uh, LP as Woodstock High comes to LP, but then LP goes to Woodstock North. And uh, the band coming out on the field now. Of course, we'll have National Anthem soon. Uh, in eight-man football, Amboy Lamoille, the Clippers, leading River Ridge 16 to nothing. Uh, seven minutes to go in the first quarter of that game. Yeah, see so in eight-man football, who are they missing? They have a few extra less linemen. I'm not familiar. Yeah. I've heard seven. I've heard of seven-man right. football, not eight. There's a lot of schools that have went to eight-man uh, in Illinois, and uh, Amboy is one of them. Flanagan, Cornell, Woodland mm -hmm. is yep. in eight-man football now. Okay. Yeah, those are uh, yeah, big programs that have had football teams over the years. Yeah. So. Yeah. Plenty of success. Yeah. But uh, 
some teams have just you know you'd rather do the eight man than be like Riverdale yes. and or uh, yeah Riverdale Sandwich Sandwich is gonna say not gonna know a varsity uh, team there yeah which was shocking being a three a four a school yep. obviously not enough kids to uh, field a varsity team they are still having a JV team this yes. year so getting the kids experience uh, nevertheless so. We're going to take uh, another break, and when we come back, we're going to have, well, at the tail end of this break, we'll have our coach's interview with LP head coach Jose Medina. I was able to sit down with uh, the coach yesterday and uh, talk about last week and tonight's game. And um, we uh, thank, of course, uh, Coach Medina every week, and we thank LaSalle Body and Fender for uh, sponsoring our weekly coach's interview and injury status update. When your car gets banged up, call a Sal Body and Fender. You can also call them for 24-hour towing. The number, 815-223-0598. Jeremy Aiken, Mike Porter, pregame show here from Metamora High School, looking at probably an 8 o'clock kickoff. Cavaliers and Redbirds, stay tuned. We'll be right back after the coach's interview on 1039 WLPO. Come see your friends at First State Bank. There's a certain satisfaction you get when you know you have a friend to turn to. You have a place to go. Year after year, day after day. When you need a helping hand, we're along the way. Come see your friends at First State Bank. Member FDIC. You gotta call Grazier's. Your water is running, it just won't stop. What do you do? You gotta call Grazier's for heating and cooling. What do you do? Give us a call. You gotta call Grazier's. We're the ones who can stop the drips and the drip, drip drops. Winter, summer, spring, and fall. When you need us, give us a call. You gotta call Grazier's. 8221 Welcome to KC Marketing, your digital marketing agency. KC Marketing specializes in providing affordable online solutions for your business. From graphic design and social media marketing to custom website development. Put the power of KC Marketing to work for you. Search KC Marketing Agency now to get started.
Athena once again. That was our LaSalle body and fender coaches interview. And, uh, yeah, there's a few Cavaliers who are uh, sitting out tonight's game with some injuries. But he mentioned some names. Uh, one name from last year, a big guy up front, uh, Mike, that they'll have back tonight is uh, Warren Rowicki. And uh, he'll play some nose guard, some tackle. And uh, your coach is really excited about a stud wrestler, Connor Lorden, who uh, missed the first game but should be in action tonight. Uh, brings size. Connor listed at about 6'4", 200 pounds. So, and he brings that grit and toughness that wrestlers Yeah, bring. Connor Lorden is uh, a load. He's a very, very strong kid. So uh, that's going to help wherever he's out, you know, interior line or defensive end or whatnot, wherever he's going to be playing. He's a... Uh, He's a strong kid, so that'll definitely play uh, into Cavaliers' uh, favor. So we're about five minutes away from uh, kickoff, and uh, we'll keep it right here. And we'll check another Subway scoreboard update. And uh, we thank Subway, of course, uh, really being our uh, scoreboard update sponsor for several years now. Subway in Spring Valley, Peru, LaSalle, Marseilles, and Oglesby. Enjoy a sandwich made with freshly baked bread and fresh ingredients right in front of your eyes. Subway, eat fresh. Uh, we had the score earlier where St. Bede was up in the uh, later in the first quarter, 15 to 8 over uh, Erie Prophetstown. And uh, we'll look for some other scores. The Bureau Valley in action tonight. Ottawa and Streeter, that'll be fun to uh, see what happens with that score. I believe Bureau Valley is playing Sherrard tonight, and Sherrard mm -hmm. leads Bureau Valley 14 to 6 late in the second quarter. Princeton, of course, won last night. Unfortunately, Mendota uh, doesn't play tonight. They were no. supposed to play Riverdale in oh, week two, and, and Riverdale yeah. bowed So out. why did uh, Princeton play yesterday? Is it, I'm guessing, for the officials? I was told, well, f so the story goes is their week one game was originally on a Thursday because of officials. They found the officials and moved it back to Friday. I was told by Athletic Director Jeff Olson that last night's game was uh, not because of officials, but um, the team they played, Orion, had some kind of school or community event oh, tonight, so gotcha. they requested gotcha. a Thursday okay, night game. Nice, so yeah. yeah, but it probably won't be the last. Uh, you know, so far so so good. LP schedule has been right. Friday night games, but I'm sure all the athletic directors are oh, prepared yeah. to make changes at the last minute. Uh, switches there, absolutely. I mean, they had to deal with that. Like you said, the officials, and then something new this year. There was a lot of teams dealing with a helmet shortage. I don't know if you heard about that, Mike, but. There was actually a website created for high schools to, to go on there and right. say, hey, we could use some help right. in high schools from around the state. Well, you know, you out. say that. the I know the youth football program uh, in the Illinois Valley was having a lot of problems with um, uh, helmets, and they the younger group actually went to flag football. Okay. So the two second grade, third grade, fourth grade for the uh, youth football league are now doing flag. Um, I think one of the main reasons was because of the helmet shortage. And I was told, just like much of any, uh, everything else, is there was that, you know, the uh, the supply issue, the backup yes. with Riddell, who makes yep. a lot of the equipment and stuff. Right. There was plants, uh, all kinds of issues, kind of like with the, everything from, what, baby formula to whatever, all the well, stuff. Well, I'll use the two magic words, <laughs> supply chain. Right, the supply that's, chain. That's so. the, the words of the day, I think, uh, for quite some time now. So the Metamora Redbirds coming out on the field at uh, the 50-yard line. The Cavaliers have been waiting on their side of the field, and, uh, you know, they've been waiting a while. It's kind of like UT last week, Mike. Yeah. The visitors were waiting and waiting and waiting uh, for the senior night festivities to get over. And uh, as you can imagine, uh, you mentioned, Mike, this Metamora crowd is raring to go. Yes, so they are. The Cavaliers got to try to take some uh, – Wind out of their balloons yeah. or wind out of their sails if they can. I, yeah, I hope they do early. Uh, they'll get the ball first. And it's funny that they uh, and they uh, we have a little game notes uh, section mm -hmm. that the uh, athletic director gave us. It's funny they're calling this game Christmas in September. Okay. Uh, basically, it's because they're talking about uh, the Metamora's red, white, and black yeah. uniforms clashing with <laughs> LP's red, green, and white. That's it, yeah. Um, and they give us a pretty somber note here that it is coming 114 days before actual Christmas Day. Uh -huh. So wow. um, we, I don't think we want to talk about uh, December 25th right yet, but it's 114 days till Christmas. Get your presents early. And so you're right. I mean, I'm growing up, I went to school in Moline, and uh, I remember us playing LP a few times and always looked at LP, and, yeah, it's the team with the Christmas. Yep. The Christmas colors, red and green. And uh, 
So uh, I don't blame Metamora for going that no, route. No, not and, at all. Uh, yeah, it's pretty nice, Mike. You got a little pregame, almost a program there of game notes, kind of like uh, Sterling would do that. Yeah, often. It's, uh, it is really amazing what they've got here. Obviously, they have notes about the game from last week. Yep. They have the standings for all the conferences and whatnot. They have the rosters. And then they also have a little section, a <laughs> football pronunciation nice. guide. And as an announcer, I would appreciate this every week because you get up there sometimes and see some of the names. Uh, it, it becomes difficult uh, announcing some of these uh, players' names. So we're about ready to go, and uh, the teams are out on the field as we get ready for our Eureka Savings Bank opening kickoff. Opening kickoff for tonight's high school football game brought to you by Eureka Savings Bank. Since 1885, Eureka Savings Bank has been proud to be part of this community, helping people just like you. Eureka Savings Bank, member FDIC. Again, the Cavaliers won the coin toss. They will receive... And back deep for the Cavaliers will be the dangerous Mason Lynch and uh, also Caleb Burrell, number one. So we'll see if Metamora uh, saw the tape from last week and maybe tries to keep it away from number three. Let's hope not. Yeah, I would. Uh, Caleb Burrell can handle his own, too. Oh, absolutely. So. Yep. They, were, they both did a good job, but obviously Mason Lynch was the uh, stud last week. Here we go. And a line yep. drive kick, and it's going to be a uh, touchback to start this game. So they'll take the kick return out of the equation for the LP Cavaliers. So we're underway right at 8 o'clock. You're listening to LP Cavalier football on AM at 1220, FM 103.9, WLPO, LaSalle, Peru, Oglesby. As we hit the 8 o'clock hour, LP will take the ball from their own 20-yard line after the touchback. Brendan Boudreau, his second start as LP Varsity quarterback, 1-0, and of course, and had a nice all-around game last week, a touchdown pass, 5-for-5, five five, and also had some very nice and very big runs uh, at quarterback. He may not be as fast and as shifty as Sean Whitfield last year, but still a very tough runner. And the Cavaliers will open up with a run right up the middle. Last week, they went with a gadget play, Mike. This week, they <laughs> start with their bread and butter. Right off tackle up the middle, look like uh, Peyton Ellermeyer, yep. and uh, give him maybe two yards on that play. Yeah, and Ellermeyer had a really nice game last week, too. He was a great compliment to Lynch in the backfield, so uh, I wouldn't mind seeing more Ellermeyer tonight. Yeah, he got a touchdown last week. Second down and uh, a long, I say a short nine, a long hit, I guess, for the Cavaliers. In motion is Lynch. Boudreaux, straight drop back pass. Brennan looking deep, throwing, and is going to overthrow his intended receiver down the sideline. And it uh, looked like it might have been Billy Minnie streaking down the sideline. Yep. And it goes incomplete. Yep, led him a little bit too far. So third and eight here for the Cavs. So quickly, LP in a hole at third and eight. That's uh, Brennan Boudreaux's first incompletion of the season. As again, last week he was five for five against United Township. Yeah, that's a pretty good stat there. Yep. Third and nine for LP at their own 21-yard line. Just starting at Metamora High School. The freshman game went to the Redbirds 14-0 over the Cavaliers. We'll see if the offensive line can give uh, Boudreaux some time, assuming he's going to pass on this play. And straight drop back for Boudreaux. He's got plenty of time. Throws and oh, uh, just a little there. behind Mason Lynch who uh, came out of the backfield. He could not haul it in, and it goes incomplete. So LP will go three and out and be forced to punt the ball to the Redbirds back deep for Metamora. And uh, he's standing around midfield. Will be number eight, Caden Hartnett, who happens to be their quarterback as well. Okay, and I believe it's uh, number 22. Is Malik Madrigal, yeah. Malik Madrigal. I think Madrigal he only punted maybe once or twice last week. Yeah, I think they were trying out a couple different players last yeah. week kicking, so we'll see what happens. Um, he had one punt blocked. Yep, and I believe Braxton Simmons punted once too. Oh, oh it hit somebody. It, looked it like hit a Metamora Redbird. It looks like LP falls on it. Uh, and, yep, we yep. got the call. Yep. It, it hit a Metamora Redbird, and Antonio Rodriguez recovers it. So that's, that's a huge break. First mistake of the game there by Metamora. I know the coaches are probably yelling at the players to get out of the way. They usually have oh, a code yeah. word to, you know, scatter basically away from the kick. So now there's going to be an official uh, conversation here. So we'll uh -huh. see a lot of times when this happens, uh, 
things don't happen usually pretty well good so we'll <laughs> see they're not going to change the call here so cavaliers are going to have the first down as it stands tonight's turnovers are proudly sponsored by bex keep your car turning over with fuel from bex and pru or lasalle and try a delicious godfather's pizza from bex in lasalle so the cavaliers offense Right back at it, Boudreaux going to run the option. Brendan turns oh, it inside. There's penalty. a flag, probably going to be a hold on the Cavaliers. Yeah, you would guess uh, it was thrown from the interior uh, referee there in the middle of the field, so I'm going to guess holding at that spot. So it'll take yep. away a five-yard gain for Boudreaux, and it'll be uh, first down, and the, the flag was thrown from right around the line of scrimmage, so it'll be a 10-yard mark off from there. So uh, the Cavaliers will be uh, get first down over, but push back to about their 36-yard line. So the first penalty of the night for either team. So they got first and 19, it appears. 11 minutes. Yeah, we're only one minute in, and we've already had uh, a turnover, a punt, a holding penalty. Madrigal and Simmons are the wideouts for the Cavaliers. Boudreaux under center for LP. And they're going to go to Ellemeyer off right tackle. And Peyton gets it out to about the 40, 41 yard line. Squirts his way out for a nice gain. Gain of about five. And it'll set up a second down at about 14 for LP. Yeah, he just gets low and uh, runs straight. He doesn't get pushed back, so uh, good run by Ellemeyer. Of course, LP uh, trying to make up for uh, the loss of Matt Carrico, who was just a workhorse uh, the last few years for the Cavaliers at that fullback position. So uh, Ellemeyer getting the call early on this season. Second and 14, Boudreaux under center. Brendan, uh, oh, oh, kind of oh, a busted yeah, play. Yeah, that was a busted play there. And uh, he'll get back to the line. Of, now he's probably lost a yard. Yeah, he lost maybe one or two there, but he got hit pretty hard too. So somebody made a mistake on the in the backfield. It looked like they were going to try to go with the option play, but Brennan uh, didn't see a back running with him, and uh, by that point he had a red jersey right on top of him yep. for the tackle. So they will give him a loss of one, third and fifteen for the Cavaliers. Yeah, once you get uh, have a mistake like that, the uh, quarterback's kind of stuck, and he's just got to try to get back to the line of scrimmage. Another, th another third and long here for the Cavs. And Boudreaux going to pass. Oh. He has a man wide open. Dropped. Oh. He was behind the defense. Was that Madrigal? I don't know if that was Madrigal. It, it looks like it. Yep, yep. Madrigal got behind. The Metamore defense and had nothing but field in front of him, green grass, and it goes off the fingertips of Malik. So fourth down, the Cavaliers will have to punt it away. Wow, and that was a great pickup. There was a blitz coming in. The interior line uh, had the blitz, so the running back out of the out, out of the backfield, wide open. So missed opportunity there for the Cavs. High snap. Malik has to go back and get it. Gets a nice punt away, and Metamora calls for the fair catch, and they make it this time at the 37 yard line. We'll keep it right here. So the Cavaliers cannot take advantage of the turnover on Metamora. Hmm. And LP could have maybe had six, but just couldn't haul in that pass. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a little high, but I yeah. think he should have caught that one. Um, you know, obviously it's just a missed opportunity. So game's still early, nine minutes left in the first quarter. So We'll see what the Cavs defense can do against the uh, Metamora offense. Yeah, first look at Metamora, and uh, they will have the quarterback not under center. He's out in the shotgun or the pistol, if you will. A tight end with two receivers to uh, the right. And the quarterback's going to throw and has a man. It's caught uh -oh. at the 50, 45, 40, 35. Mason Lynch makes the tackle down to the 32-yard line. That catch was made by Noah, Noah Simmons. Oh, Simmons, okay. Yep, number 12. Gotcha. Just a slant pass. It was a little high, but yeah. Simmons made a nice play. Got a block down field, and uh, he was off to the races. And just like the pass play. LP, uh, or uh, Metamora down to the Cavalier 32-yard line. Two backs in the backfield now for Metamora. And they handed it out. Oh, Whoa! Big, big time hit. And was that? 
Yes, that was Connor Lorton saying hello. <laughs> yep, I told you he's uh, he's a, he's a load in the center of the uh, defense there. So good play by Connor. Nice introduction. What a hit, and that's a big loss of about five yards. Connor Lorton, who missed last week, and uh, Coach Medina was, uh, I said, quiet. Boy, they gave him quite a bit of forward progress. Forward progress. The market at the 34, so still a loss of a, about three at least. Nope. And maybe a delay a game. No, Back no official. it's false start, I'm guessing. Still, nope. Legal substitution on Metamora, so let him move him back five yards. Both teams now with a penalty. LP had a hold earlier on in this quarter. So they'll mark the ball now at the LP 39-yard line. Well, we're at least going in the right direction here if you're a Cavs fan. At the half, Subway scoreboard update. Hall with a lead over Monmouth-Roseville, 22-16. to mm. Second and 17 for the Redbirds. Their quarterback, Caden Hartnett, and oh, nice, not, not much nice there. Looked like uh, Andy Medina was there. Also for the Cavaliers, Antonio Rodriguez, a couple linebackers, did not give him any running room. Yeah, he kind of subbed uh, the lineman there and just tackled the quarterback right at, his, right at his feet. Very little gain, like you said, of any. Third down, and uh, they'll give him one. Third and 16 from the Cavalier 38. One receiver to the left of Hartnett. Two backs in the backfield. And they're going to pitch it out. And nice open Ooh. field tackle by the Cavaliers. And a late flag comes in. Uh-oh. I'm, I'm going to think it might be a helmet, uh, helmet to helmet perhaps. Well, we'll see. It looked like uh, something like that. Although it was from the official from behind. So they're pointing to the Cavs' side. So. So LP would have had him on a fourth down, but a flag personal foul face oh, mask. Oh, face mask, okay. Wow. All right, so we didn't see that on that end. but uh, No, it looked like he was getting it popped, like you're yeah. right, Mike. He got hit by a couple guys. I didn't see the face mask. Yeah, maybe it wasn't from the initial tackler. I, I'm not really sure, but that's a – That's a big one. Yeah, you know, you're third and 17, and you gain only three or four yards, and you get a 15-yard penalty. So that's going to hurt. And that will put Metamora right at the 20-yard line, their first trip to the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. So LP had Metamora looking at a fourth and long, but they get a face mask call. And a handoff, and he's got running room this time, tripped up, gets inside the 15-yard line. And uh, that run was uh, Mark Frederick, a sophomore for Metamora. He got some running room, about six yards maybe mm -hmm. on that carry. Yep. Be second down and four. And again, the big lineman for uh, Metamora is on the right side, a right tackle, Ben Wallace. Actually, he's the left tackle now that I see the formation. 773. Second and four coming up for Metamora. Hard fumble, fumble, fumble is the handoff. And it's a. I don't know. Boy, Connor Lorton was trying to wrestle it away from him. <laughs> and Metamora does come up with it, Harton it. That could have been Metamora's second turnover of the night. Yeah, Boy. Warden was right there. So they do lose a couple yards there on the fumbled exchange in the backfield. Third and six now for the Redbirds Another. at the LP 16. Another big play for the defense. Yeah, they had him stopped on a third down last time, but a face mask. Call moved uh, the chains and gave Metamora a first down. Two receivers split out each side of uh, Hartnett for Metamora. LP showing a blitz, and Hartnett's going to keep it. Oh, he's he has a first down and more. He's got a touchdown. Hmm. Quarterback keeper untouched, basically, for uh, Caden Hartnett from 16 yards out. And Metamora takes advantage of the big penalty on LP to keep a drive alive, a 16-yard quarterback keeper for Hartnett. And Metamora first on the board at 5.19 to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, well, they did uh, what they uh, wanted to do. They got the short field and uh, was able to put it in. 20-yard drive there. And let's see if Metamora looks like they're showing a two-point conversion here. 
Yeah, no, I saw the kicker yep. doing pretty well during warm-ups, but. Full house backfield. Well, now they split out. And no, Hartman looks a like he's wild keep cat. It. And he's going to fall into the end yep, zone. He got yep. tackled, but the momentum took him in for the two-point conversion. Oh, uh-oh, we got a flag on the uh, play there right. after the uh, two-point conversion. I'm okay. going to guess it's going to be some sort of personal foul. Somebody was doing something down there. I couldn't really tell. All right, hopefully so. it'll be offsetting. We'll 519 here in the first quarter. It's Metamore 8, LP nothing, and uh, we'll see if there is a uh -oh. uh, penalty. Another one. He just threw it again, so I'm going to guess uh, it could be another penalty on LP. I think the uh, LP player was kind of chatting to the uh, yeah. referee down there in the end zone, and he threw the flag once again. So the Cavaliers have had a holding penalty, a face mask, and let's see what uh, we get here. Officials talking to Metamore sideline, Jared Grebner. Hartnett with the quarterback keeper for Metamora. And two penalties against LP. So they'll mark him off on the kickoff. Yeah, he'll be kicking off from like probably LP's 40. So <laughs> they're going to go over the scoreboard here. Yeah, Metamora had a... Uh, Touchback, their first kickoff, and it would be an upset if this one wasn't a touchback here. And it looks like they're going to kick off from the Cavalier. Oh, yeah, wow, where is this one going to go? Holy cow, I've never seen a kickoff from here. The 30-yard line? Yep. Yeah, he's going to kick a field goal here. <laughs> you got to be careful if you're LP here, because if you're Metamora, why not go for an onside kick at this point? <laughs> You know, really, yeah, why no. not? You're already, you know, if LP gets it, they're yeah, going to be around the 20-yard line, 25 anyway, so yeah, why not go try? it's got to go 10 yards, so it's going to be right. at least the 20, so. Um, I would that, go ahead and try, like, an onside kick here. Yep. No sense of kicking it out of the end zone. No. You know you can do it, so. A lot of guys in the press box are saying the same yep. thing here. Yeah, so. Cavaliers got to be on uh, alert here. Eight to nothing, the Redbirds lead after the uh, quarterback keeper by Hartnett, 16 yard touchdown. Well, I think the Cavaliers are going to have to be uh, careful here because we've got uh, three personal fouls in the first quarter. So uh, that's really not a good start penalty wise well, for the Cavaliers. And a fourth penalty, a hold. Right. Right. Those you can deal with more so than the after the play. And they did go ahead. Yeah, smart play by Metamora. Just yep. going ahead and try to do an yep. onside kick. Nice job by the Cavaliers just to fall on it. And yeah. it actually, it turns out even better than a, a touchback for the Redbirds because the Cavaliers are not even at the 20. They'll start yep. the drive at their own 18-yard line. Yep, worked. That's pretty smart uh, coaching there. Eight to nothing, Redbirds with the lead over the Cavaliers. Cavaliers, uh, this is what, the, is this her third possession already? Yep. <laughs> They haven't had a, a first down. They had a, a drop pass that could have went maybe for six on their last possession. Yeah, three passes and uh, five runs here. Boudreaux hands it off up the middle. Just nothing there. Swallowed up on the play. I would think it was Ellermeyer. Yep. Ellermeyer gets nothing. And they get maybe a half yard forward progress. Yep, we'll give them a yard here. Second down and nine coming up for the Cavs. We're under five minutes to go in this first quarter. Yeah, it's interesting. We're seeing Ellermeyer here we'll do the workload so far. Uh, Mason Lynch was the big runner last week. Second and nine for the Cavs. Simmons and Madrigal are the receivers. Boudreaux under center. And Brennan's going to run the option. He fakes the oh. pitch, just dives forward. Yeah, he got tripped up in the backfield. And got it maybe to the 20. And they'll give him, they'll give him a little pass yeah, right at the 20. Yep. So another long third and eight here for the Cavaliers. One yard on the carry for Boudreaux. Down to four minutes to play when this ball is snapped for LP. 
Play clock, plenty of time, 15 seconds. See if the Cavaliers go back to the air here. Nope, oh, whistles blow and... I guess it's gonna be a false start. Unless there's someone called a timeout. Ah, flag flew. And it is a false start in LP, their fifth penalty of this first quarter. Hmm. So it'll be third and 13 now. And uh, Cavaliers obviously a run first offense, so they are not comfortable being put in third and long situations. Well, really, I don't think last week they had very many no. of those opportunities, if I'm not mistaken. They were, it was very rare that they had third and long on any other drives that whole game. Third and 13 for the Cavaliers. They're back, backed up to their own 15-yard line. Boudreaux again under center, and Brendan's going to pitch it uh -oh. to he's Lynch. Up. He breaks one tackle, spins away from a second. Oh, he's going the he's wrong in direction. trouble, and uh, Mason gets it out to about the 10. He lost yardage. Benamora has got enough speed to make up ground, and uh, LP went backwards there. Mason's helmet actually came off at the end. Yeah, it looks like a loss of five on that play. So the Cavaliers will have to punt it pretty much out of their own end zone here. And if you're Metamora, you see last week what happened with UT. I think you bring some heat here. Well, and the last uh, snap was yeah. high, so Mandrigal yep. did uh, all he could just to catch the ball. So they got to be real careful it doesn't go out of the end zone. Malik standing in the middle of his end zone here. Metamora winning so far the uh, game and the field. But there's a low oh, snap. Oh, good play by Madrigal. Malik gets it off the ground. Not much on the punt. Let's hope it takes an LP bounce. Kind of a neutral bounce yep. at the 30-yard line. So Metamora in business here. They'll start this drive at the LP 30-yard line. It is 8 to nothing. Redbirds over the Cavaliers. 2.38 to go in this first quarter. We'll keep it right here. The Cavaliers have uh, had the ball most of this yeah. first quarter but haven't done much with it offensively. No, yeah, and this is definitely not the start that uh, Coach Medina wanted to see. Uh, Metamora getting in the short fields. So first and 10 for the Redbirds against the Cavaliers here. Two backs in the backfield. And Hartnett hands it off to the first back through the hole, gets it down about the 26 yard line. Kind of hard to see who the runner was on that number four, it looks like. Shaking up a little Davis, bit. Cameron Davis. Yeah, they've had a, kind of like LP, they'll use Quite a few different ball carriers. And uh, give Davis about four yards. They mark it at the Cavalier 27-yard line. So uh, they'll say three. Three. Speaking of three, three receivers set for Metamora. Two to the left, one to the right of Hartnett. And a high snap, but he hands it off. And nothing there. Nice yep. job by Andy Medina. Yep, number 45. He was right there in the backfield. He's a sophomore, Medina with a tackle for a loss for the Cavaliers. And here we go again. LP is forcing Metamora in a third and long. Last time, there's bailed the Redbirds out with a face mask penalty. So, see if LP can uh, keep the hinkies off the field here. Third and 11 for yeah, the Redbirds. third and 11. Uh, granted, it's probably four down territory here for uh, Metamora. And uh, they're kind of having some issues wondering what play here. We're down. Yeah, there's some... Yeah, We're down to 10 changes. seconds. And they got some players looking towards their sideline for Metamora. Yep, they and got it off. they're going to run it, and Hartnett goes up the middle and runs right into the uh, Cavalier defender, yep. making the tackle for LP. Imany, Brett Imany in the middle Brett linebacker. Brett yep. uh, made a big play there. Fourth and nine. It might have just been one of those busted plays for Metamora, I think. Mike. Yeah, they didn't look uh, real sharp on that particular uh, setup there. So gain of maybe... A yard or two. Yeah, Hartnett probably just said, you know what, I'm going to run with this and see what I can get. So fourth and ten. Too close to, to punt it. Yeah, and I don't know if field goal would be pretty yeah. long here, 47 yards. So Metamora is going to go for it, fourth and nine, uh, just inside the 30. Straight drop back for Hartnett, throws towards the sideline, nope. overthrows, just too high for the nope. intended receiver off his fingertips. And uh, that looked to be James Fitzgibbons. So LP's defense, nice job making a turnover on downs against the Redbirds. Yeah, that's a good, uh, good draw or good play by the defense to uh, prevent the uh, Redbirds to score. 
So first and 10 uh, coming up for LP. Yep, it does look like the ball should be on the 30. They moved him back a yard for some reason. Huh? Cavs lost a yard by <laughs> just standing there. Boudreaux under center, and he goes first man through. A little bit of running room at first, but then a nice hit for uh, the Redbirds who hit Ellemeyer. And yeah, he had a little running room there, so he gained a quick two. So that probably going to be the last play of the first quarter. Yeah, the clock is going down. LP hasn't broke the huddle, so you're right, Mike. We've played one from Metamora, and uh, so far the Redbirds lead the Cavaliers 8 to nothing. but LP will have the football when we come back on your home for LP Cavalier football, 103.9 WLPO. Gergovich Family Chiropractic in LaSalle is a proud supporter of high school sports. Dr. Gergovich utilizes the most advanced technology to provide effective care for men, women, and children of all ages. Whether you're getting down in a three-point stance, getting down off a ladder, or getting down on a dance floor, you need a chiropractor on your health care team. Search Gergovich Family Chiropractic today to see all the ways having Dr. Gergovich on your team can help you be happier, healthier, and pain-free. When you need commercial and industrial equipment repair, think Full Circle Industrial. FCI specializes in rebuilding speed reducers and gearboxes. They repair and rebuild all types of pumps and heavy equipment too. You break it, Full Circle will fix it. The techs at Full Circle have more than 75 years combined experience. Put that experience to work for you. Search Full Circle Industrial in Ogilvy and see everything FCI can do for you today. When you need a new appliance, think Grazier's Plumbing and Heating in McNabb. Look at this impressive list of brands Grazier's offers. From kitchen to laundry, appliances at Grazier's may just be the best kept secret in McNabb. was all over it. Oh. They were not fooled by the wide receiver pass, and uh, Lynch made the catch, the lateral, and goes back for about a five-yard loss. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, with a, with a quick defense like that, that play's got to move fast. There's no uh, pausing on that. So Lynch probably didn't have a receiver open and not trying to force it, so right. have him lose five yards instead of throwing an interception. So the Cavaliers once again staring at a third and long, a third and 15 from their own 24-yard line. Yeah, the Cavs have had a third and 13, a third and 16, and now a third and 15. <laughs> so yeah. not the way you want to be uh, playing on the offensive side of the ball. Not for a power-running football team. No. Pitch to Mason Lynch, and Lynch uh, breaks two or three tackles before he's forced out of bounds on the LP side of the field. And uh, the Cavaliers will go three and out. And uh, they mark him out of bounds at about the 24. So yeah, they're they going to say he actually lost a yard? Yeah, they were running towards the short side of the 25. field. So Lynch didn't really have a lot of no. room to play around with. So, uh, you know, he got what he could, but unfortunately it was a loss. So the Cavaliers will have to punt it again. Malik Madrigal at his own 10-yard line. Well, Metamore is definitely winning the uh, game of field position right now. They're coming at him. Oh, that, that punt straight up in the air. Oh, nice yeah. Cavs bounce. Yeah, it takes bounce a big there. Cavalier bounce and will roll down at the Metamora 40. All right, some well, more, we'll take that. Some more scores, uh, Mike. Uh, Streeter ahead of Ottawa, 14 to nothing in the second. At the half, Marquette leading Chicago Christian, 27 nothing. Seneca, 22-8 over Hoopston at the halftime. The corn jerkers of Hoopston. <laughs> Again, Hall at last check was up 22-16 at the half over Monmouth Roseville. Hartnett back uh, on the field for the Redbirds, and uh, he's going to keep it. that one. And going to be tackled by a host of Cavaliers, including Medina. And uh, also there for the Cavaliers was uh, Danny Beavers, a linebacker, a sophomore. So two sophomores. Hmm. Uh, getting action out there for the Cavaliers. Medina and Beavers at linebacker. 
They give him one yard on the carry. Tough one there. Yeah. Second and nine coming up for Metamora. Second and nine coming up for Metamora. Oh, and like offside or, or somebody, something. yeah, no flags were thrown. Yeah, big and, play in uh, the backfield. Going to go as a tackle for a loss. Rodriguez was there. Antonio for LP will take it. That's a two-yard loss against Metamora. Yeah. As they took the ball carrier down back at the 39 of the Redbirds. So Metamora. Yeah, I thought for sure they were going to call something, whether it be a yeah. full start or whatnot. But Cavaliers got lucky on that play. Third and 11 coming up for the Redbirds. See if LP can get some uh, heat and some pressure on Hartnett, their quarterback. It's been a little too comfortable back then. Yes. Third and 11 coming up. Hartnett straight drop back pass. He's got, he's they're going to run a screen. Oh. And he's got a lot of open field. First down and more at the 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, and pushed out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. No flags on the play. A beautiful screen pass. Metamora took advantage of uh, aggression by LP on a third and long and uh, just drawn up really well for the Redbirds. Yeah, that uh, screen pass to Eiffel, 5'9", uh, senior. Uh, oh, there is a flag. Bring it back. Oh, I didn't see that one. That's yeah, must... fortunate for the Cavaliers. So let's see what the call is. And it's going to be a block hold. in the back or a hold. Holding. Yep. Holding on Metamora, so big break for the Cavs. So take uh, that big play off the board. Wow. So LP's had a big, big penalty go against them. That one, a big penalty goes against the Redbirds. And yes. they're not going to actually lose no, much yardage. They probably wouldn't lose any because it was, I think it was at the 48. So uh, you only, you know, the spot, spot foul, so 10 yards from the spot of the foul. So. Redbirds only lost, really, maybe a yard, maybe, maybe. But. Yeah. So third and 11 again. So the Cavs have to watch for the screen once again. Yeah, it was just a beautifully designed screen. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, it LP played right was into bringing the Cavs. five or six guys. Cavs yeah. defense was uh, rushing the passer, and the uh, screen pass went right past them. Yeah, late substitution for Metamora, and uh, the coach sees that, and they'll call a timeout. Yep. First timeout of the half taken by either the Redbirds or the Cavaliers. We'll take one as well. We'll be right back in about 30 seconds. Metamora up 8 nothing over LP. Third and 12. Next up for Metamora, your home for Cavalier football, 103.9 WLPO. A quick timeout, and it's third down and 12 coming up for Metamora. Let's see if the LP defense can come up with another stop. Metamora had yeah, a big they got play. Yeah, four receivers out here. Uh -oh. And, oh, late flag. Maybe a false start on Metamora. Yeah, it's hard to say. I would guess that would be right when the quarterback yep. hiked the ball. It's going to yep, be third start. and 17 now. All right, so that's another five. So, yeah, there is some a little confusion. They move it back to the 28. And they're going to run a uh, wide receiver screen this time. And the Cavaliers collapse on the run, and there's another flag coming oh in late. Oh, my goodness. So hmm. Metamore is going to look at a fourth and long, but let's see if there's a penalty coming up on LP. Yeah, the, the quarter was running really smooth here, and then they got uh, several penalties. There's another face mask.
LP's already had oh. one face mask call tonight. And talking to Coach Jose Medina right now. And it's a, it's a mark off on LP, but it's going to be not enough for a first down. Yeah, fortunately, uh, Metamora had a 12 yards to gain here. So a hold on the defense. Huh. So they'll mark hmm. it at the 44 yard line. Hmm. Um, it is short of the first down. The Cavaliers went ahead and took their first timeout of the first half. So it is, uh, is it third down? And it, I think it is third. They had to replay that down. Okay. Gotcha. Um, but I think, you know, up here they marked off a false start 10 yards. So I think that kind of confused things up here yeah. in the press box. So it was a, it was an advantage to the Cavs, of course. But it's eight nothing Metamora over LP here in the third first quarter, second quarter, second quarter. Yep, <laughs> we're moving along. At eight thirty, normally we would be in the third quarter. So we'll check, and uh, we've got a break in the action here. Yeah, I haven't seen any Twitter scores. I don't know why they if they're updating them here. Amboy Lamoille at halftime, a clock runner, 52 0 over River Ridge. Wow. So we're back in action now. Third and about six. And Hartnett is going to keep it, and he's got the first down over past midfield. Lynch and Medina with the tackles there. Hartnett needed six and looked like he got about seven on yeah. that. Oh, well, they move him back to the 50. Yeah, that's still uh, first down. Oh, it's right there. So up, they moved it up a little bit. So I think it's a first down. Yeah, it should be first down for yeah. the Redbirds right at just inside midfield. Yep, it should be. So they're right in the middle of the field, right below the Cardinal or the Redbird. I almost said Cardinal. <laughs> I guess it's the same thing, but first and ten for the Redbirds right at midfield. And Hartnett gonna pass. Yep, fake. Yep. Oh, that's gotta be one of the LP and it's Oh, it's tipped. That's and an it's interception. intercepted. Let's see. Oh, they're gonna say it hit the turf. Oh. And there's going to be a hold. An LP player got taken down trying to go after the quarterback. So Yeah, it was number 52 with the interception. Yeah, it hit the turf, though. It'll be a hold on Metamora. It'd be nice if we had the replay on that one, Mike, to see the. Yeah, they probably could throw it on the uh, video board, but I don't <laughs> think they're going to do that. So it'll be a 10-yard walk-off. And it'll be a, from the backfield where the hold took place. We'll move it back to about the 40. They'll replay first down as it's been uh, just kind of a clunky second quarter here. That's yeah. the word I came up with, clunky. I, well, that's, with that penalties works with and, uh, four penalties and uh, almost interception. Yeah. And we still have about eight minutes to go here in the first half. And Metamora with the pitch play getting some of their big block. Nice play. Oh, oh, he breaks two or three tackles. Oh, another and a, penalty. And another flag. So I'm going to guess it's either going to be a hold or it's going to be a face mask <laughs> based on the position of the referee over there. And uh, it's going to be another hold or yeah, block in the back, in the on back. Metamora. Yep. LP, let's see if they push him back or decline it because there wasn't going to be any gain there, really, despite a great run. The yeah, running back broke two or three they, tackles. Coach Medina would decline that one, but what do we know up here? We're just. Yeah, they are going to decline yep. it. Yep, good play by the defense. So, second down and long. Yeah, second and what, 18, it looks like? Second down and about 18 coming up for the Redbirds. Yeah, 
I think it was this drive that they had the big screen pass called back by a penalty, didn't they, Mike? Yep. It's been a long yep. drive. It's been a long drive. Um, haven't really moved that much. I can't keep going forward and backwards with penalties. No, that's 35 yards and penalties for Metamora so far in the second quarter, and we're not even halfway through. And Harton in ah. with a keeper, and he's got some running room, 45, 50. Uses a blocker, 45-yard line down to the 44 of LP. Nice uh, trip up by Caleb Burrell. Yeah. Hartnett's a uh, shifty runner out there, and he uses his blocks pretty darn well. So he gets it all the way into LP territory, what, the 44? Yeah, he didn't just try to burst through. Like you said, Mike, he waited around, bought his time for blockers, and it gets a nice gain of about 14 yards down to the Cavalier 44-yard line. Metamore now looking at it, I'm sure, as a four-down territory here. Third oh, yeah. down and four. Yeah, that's definitely much more manageable than, uh, you know, the LP has had so far this game. Hartnett uh, hands it off, and the first back not going to get through there. Big play by number 12, Rodriguez, Antonio Rodriguez and number 23, Brett Hymany. Um, inside linebackers uh, wrapped up the runner there after a real short gain. Run by uh, Mark Frederick, number 24, a sophomore. Yeah, no, it doesn't appear any gain there. So it'll be fourth down. Big play here. Metamora has the ball at the Cavalier 43-yard line. Yep, three yards to go here. The two receivers split out wide right. I'm going to see a quarterback keeper here, I would imagine. Hartman said pretty good. Success. And yep, yep, there he, he goes. will keep it. Needs three yards. Oh, I don't and think And bounces outside. Oh. Stiff arms the defender. Oh. What a run by Hartnett. He uh, had him in the backfield. Yep. But a great job by yeah. their quarterback uh, getting the first down. Oh, well, senior quarterbacks are going to do that. Man. Down to the 39 yard line. Needed three and got four. Wow. Missed opportunity there for the Cavs. First and 10 at the 39-yard line. Metamore keeping this drive alive. Clock stops since he was pushed out of bounds. 6.27 to go. Hartnett, straight drop back pass. Oh, nice throws little, out uh, in the flat. Sidearm throw there. The 40, to... the 35, the 30, 25. Tripped up by Lynch. And that's a first down. I think so, that was, what, Ryan Morgan? Yep. Gets down to the Cavalier 23-yard line. First down, Metamora. 16-yard gain. LP's defense has been on the field, I think, seemingly this whole quarter. At least yeah. it seems like it. Yeah, they're going to be tired for sure. And then again, they're going to have, uh, Metamora's going to have the ball yep. coming out at halftime too, so. First As they say, ten. no rest for the weary. No. Oh. Hartnett kind of juggles uh, the ball, and uh, he will go out of bounds. Not really much of a gain there. Pushed out of bounds. Yeah, he might have lost a yard or two there. Looked like Burrell pushed him out of bounds for the Cavaliers. Mason Lynch was in the area as well. Yep, he lost a yard. They'll move it back to the 25-yard line. It's been one turnover on the game, and that was against uh, Metamora early on. They uh, had a uh, punt return, hit one of their own players, and it was recovered by Antonio Rodriguez. LP could not take advantage of it. The Cavaliers just have not been able to get any offense going. No, their in this run first game half. has just been uh, stagnant. Again, like, you know, repeat of last year, you know, the defense. Throw over the middle, open. caught. And he's knocked down at about the six-yard line. And a bullet of a pass. Was that number 17? Noah, Noah Karras with the catch. So just like that, Metamora is back inside the Illinois Valley Credit Union Red Zone. Uh, great pass play. And we got a timeout taken by LP. I think they're going to try to give their defense a little bit of a breather. The Cavs' defense has been on the field a lot. It'll be first and goal at the Cavaliers' six-yard line. Eight to nothing, Metamora, 5.35 to go in the half. The Redbirds knocking on the doorstep again. You guys are behaving yourself up there. I'm proud of you. 
Coming up at halftime, we'll have a Subway scoreboard update. We'll also have our uh, second half adjustment at the half. Brought to you by Gergovich Family Chiropractic. By the time we get to half, Mike, some games might be getting over. So we could have some finals. Yeah, I would think there's going to be quite a few games finishing <laughs> up before we uh, leave uh, beautiful Metamora. Middle of the third, Hall uh, extending their lead, 28-16 over Monmouth-Roseville. Hmm. Ottawa's on the board. The second quarter, Streeter leading Ottawa 14-7. Yeah, that's got to be quite a battle down in Streeter, yeah. I would imagine. So first and goal, Redbirds. I'd consider them bitter rivals, perhaps. Oh, I would think so, yeah. First and goal from the six, full house backfield, and they now split out for Metamora. Hartnett's going to keep it. Looking for room, gets in. Touchdown, uh -oh. Metamora. Okay. That's his second touchdown of the night, Hartnett. This one from six yards out. Caden Hartnett. Oh, is there a flag? I think there may have been a yep. face mask, I believe. Or so they would decline the, it. The tackle looked a little suspicious yeah. by number one Burrell. That's just my guess based on what it looked like. Touchdown should count, I would imagine. And they're going to talk to uh, the Metamora coach. Dead ball, personal foul. Yep. So Metamora now leads 14 to nothing. Let's see if they go for two once again. Well, that now is the fourth personal foul on LP in the first half. 15 yard variety. Yep. Here obviously would be was declined, right. it looks like. Right. And Hartnett hands it off, and they're going to get in. Yep, again, the tackle falls into the end zone, so. For the two-point conversion. Getting in for Metamora was number four, Cameron Davis. So we played uh, halfway, a little more than halfway the second quarter, and uh, Metamora leading LP now 16 to nothing. The Kevlar offense. Going to have to show some life, get something going. Credit Metamora's defense so far tonight. They've given LP nothing. Yeah, no, they've they've done exactly what they wanted to do, get LP into third and long situations, and LP just could not uh, uh, get any sort of first down, any action there. LP had one brief moment on offense in the first quarter. They had Malik Madrigal behind the secondary, but it just went off his yep. fingertips. Yeah, that was uh, so, so close uh, to being a, a possible touchdown there. We'll see if the Cavaliers can uh, get something going oh, before the, the half. Now they're taking the uh, penalty on okay. the kickoff here, so Metamore is going to kick again from inside LP yeah. territory. So these are things you never, rarely ever see. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see what Metamore does here. This one's from the 45. At least it's not the 30-yard the line like before. So they'll actually have to kick it off this time instead of squibbing it. Oh. And they do do a squib, and LP will uh, down it at the 35. Of yeah, it wasn't their normal kicker on that one. They kind of did a little trick Medina. where one of the other uh, players, number yep. 10, Nick Rhodes, kicked the ball instead of the normal kicker and uh, kicked it right into uh, the LP player's chest, recovered by the LP. Cavaliers will have it first and 10 at their own 35. Do, is looking, Mike, does LP have a first down yet tonight? Um, I'm going to say probably not. I don't think so. No. 
Boudreaux going to run the option. This time, Brennan's got running room. Well, there's your first down. Yep, first first down of the night for the yep. Cavaliers. No penalty on the on the uh, play there, so. Gets gain, it out to the 48. Gain of 13 yards by Boudreaux. So finally, the Cavaliers have a positive play on offense. And it's first and 10 LP. Well, that could be what it takes, you know, have Cavalier a little uh, positive play there, so. Cavalier is putting up 31 points last week, getting plenty of offense against United Township. But uh, tough sledding so far tonight against Metamora. Uh oh, and LP, there's a lot of movement there. Yep. <laughs> Metamora was uh, doing some shifting around, and. Uh, yeah, I think the center, he wanted to hike it, and he changed his mind, but by then it was too late, so definitely a false start on the uh, center. It's a five yard mark off on the Cavaliers. After they get a positive play, there's a negative one with a penalty. First and 15, LP at their own 43 yard line. Sixteen nothing Redbirds over the Cavs. Boudreau oh, fake the uh, pa passing the has a man and it is incomplete. Oh, good play by the defense. Yeah, he didn't turn around. Got in front of uh, Roman Oli. It looked like for LP the defender, which was a nice play. If he would have made any contact, that probably would have been a flag because he didn't make any attempt Correct. to turn around. But he didn't make any contact with the LP intended receiver Brady Romanioli. So it turned out to be a nice pass defense for Metamora. Yep, and it goes incomplete. And it's now second down and 15. So the Cavs need to get some positive offense here to uh, prevent one of these, you know, third and super yeah. longs. Put themselves in a hole here. Second and 15 for LP. Boudreaux hands it off. A lot of running room. Oh, right up the middle. For Ellermeyer. He gets it past the original line of scrimmage and a few yards more. Nice burst down to the 49 of Metamora. Peyton Ellermeyer, and you're there you go, Mike. And now a much more manageable third down. Yeah, nice eight-yard burst right up the middle. Third and seven LP. They're just inside Metamora's territory here. First time, I believe, tonight. Yep. yep. And Boudreaux coming up from uh, center, goes back down, third and seven. Romanoli is going to go in motion. Boudreaux oh, is going to be brought down. He got swallowed up there by the defensive end. Didn't even have time to try to get out and run the option. Brendan. Uh -oh, oh, oh, no. I mean, he didn't. Yeah, he spiked the football. and. Uh, yep, now he takes his helmet off. He's not happy. And his dad, who, of course, is the offensive coordinator, uh, was telling him to go to the bench. So that'll be another 15-yard uh, walk-off for the Cavaliers. Ooh. Yeah, that's rough there. He spiked the ball down. Didn't spike it at any player. No, but no, just a frustration. But, yeah, like you said, that's a no-no here in uh, high school football. Two flags flew, so another 15-yard mark off. And, uh, and it's only, is it, that should be fourth down. LP's got their punt crew out there. Yeah, I think they, the down was gone, so, yeah. And it'll be fourth down and a country mile. The uh, yeah. first down marker is all the way my, at the Metamora 42. Get my calculator Cavalier punter is Madrigal. He's standing at his own 15-yard line. Hmm. Hmm. So we'll see if Malik can get a decent punt off here. Snap is oh, low again. Jesus, he's Madrigal's in trouble. In trouble. And he gets brought down by a host of Red Bird defenders at about the 15-yard line. So that one caught uh, LP where it hurts. They got away with a low snap earlier. Yep. But Madrigal was tackled, did not get the punt away. Yeah, I think Madrigal's going to have to uh, move up a little bit. Normally on a punt yeah. snap, it's 15 yards. But I think you might have to move up to 10 and just punt real quick because the center's having a real difficult time getting it to the punter. So Metamora will take over inside the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone at the 15. They've had great field position all night long. This is the greatest of uh, the great field position yep. so far, DLP 15. Yep. And they're going to pitch it, and uh, he's getting some blocks, 15. 
And Caught from behind. Yeah, not a lot there. Yep, number 12, Antonio Rodriguez again with the play. He's been all over the field so yep. far for the Cavs. Yeah, their defense back on the field again. LP's defense has uh, been out there the majority of the second quarter. Now, there has been a lot of stop and go with uh, penalties. It's been a long second quarter. Yeah, first quarter was running real smooth, and then we hit uh, – so far, one, two, three, four, five, eight penalties here in the second quarter. We'll mark the ball at the Cavalier 13-yard line. We're down to about three minutes left in this half. Hartnett with two backs in the backfield. And he hands it off, and not much there. Two or three Cavalier defenders bring him down at about the 15-yard line, making the initial tackle for LP was, again, Southmore. Danny Beavers. Yeah, A.J. Stone with the carry. No gain on the play. So LP forcing Metamora to a third down in about eight. Four down territory, of oh, course. Yeah. Third and eight at the Cavalier 13-yard line. Ten seconds left on the play clock, so we'll see if they get this off. They have... Looks like one timeout to work with. Hartnett takes the snap and hands it off. Not much there. He's still moving forward. Yeah, though. holding on to him was uh, Brett Imany. And uh, he was able to hold on to him long enough, Davis, the ball carrier, for more Cavalier uh, players to come. And then the uh, forward progress was stopped. The whistle's blew. And they'll mark the ball just outside the 10-yard line. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, they can get uh, first down at the five. Let's see if Metamora maybe uh, runs this one down. They got one timeout to work with. Minute and a half to go in this first half. Yeah, this is a must stop here for the yes. Cavaliers. They cannot score in this, uh, this drive here. Hartnett is going to keep it and turns it inside. Oh. Gets away from two LP defenders, but he does not get to the first down marker. Connor Lorden again with the big hits. Yeah. Boy, you talked about how shifty of a runner Hartnett is. Yeah, he went right between <laughs> two Cavs defenders who had him, you know, yeah. right in the backfield, but he got right through him, and Connor Lorden, unfortunately, was there to make the stop, prevent a first down, and the Cavaliers will take over. So a huge, huge stop for the LP defense. Uh, they needed that one. They're already down two possessions, and Metamora will get the football. Oh, they just announced the 50-50, Mike. I didn't get in on it tonight, did no, you? I did no, I did not. It was a $400 winner. So okay. uh, big crowd here. Yeah. Uh, so obviously that was a uh, nice pot for whoever uh, picks that one up. And Metamora calls it early. Some, uh, some locations, they'll try to let it go into about the fourth quarter. Try to build it up as much as they can. Look like LP was moving. Yep, looked like a false start, like you said. So let him move him uh, half the distance of the goal line. And uh, LP has a new quarterback in there. It's Tommy Hartman. Okay. Well, he threw yep. a pass last week, got picked off. But, uh, yeah, uh, Nathan or uh, Brendan Boudreaux had the uh, unsportsmanlike penalty, and he's taking a seat right now. Yeah, Tommy Hartman is a uh, senior quarterback. He's also a defensive back. Uh, obviously, with the Hartman clan, I know yep. that name's been familiar with a lot of LP oh, players. Yeah. Uh, uh, we've had a couple brothers come through here, Tyler, last uh, two years ago. And um, I know the uh, Hartman clan in, in uh, Ohio are definitely listening intently and watching this game on our uh, YouTube channel for sure. Ellemeyer with the one-yard carry. Metamore is going to use their last time out. Well... It should be. Second and 13. So, yeah, they might as well. That should be their last time out, I believe. Yeah, there it goes. It's off the scoreboard now. So, yeah, LP just looking to run this clock out and go in down 16 nothing. Yeah, I would think they should be. Well, play clock's not going to start until they hike it on this one here. So, we'll see how much time they'll be able to milk here. Coming up, halftime again, we'll have some scores. The Ottawa and Streeter uh, in a tussle, living up to the hype there. We'll have a scoreboard update on that one. All Red Devils looking to uh, 
beat Monmouth Roseville. St. Bede will check on them. Well, that'll be a good win for the Hall. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Uh, Roseville was a playoff team last yep. year and thought to be one of the better teams. Yeah, absolutely. So it would be a big turnaround from week one. Uh, Hall lost to Orion. But uh, given the track record of Randy Teeman, got to have a lot of faith. Uh, Hall won a lot of games with Randy Teeman as head coach. So again, LP with a change at quarterback, Hartman under center. And he gives it right back to Ellermeyer up the middle. Just got to hold on to the ball here for yeah. your LP. No game Why is the whistle blowing? Nope. I thought they were without. We must, uh, the scoreboard must have been wrong. Yeah, they have had zero up there okay. for a while after that last one, so. Hmm. So they'll have to run another play, and they'll be able to run the clock after this one, but they have to punt it away, and that's been trouble. Yeah, especially the they're Cavaliers. Be, uh, kicking it from the end zone, yep. more than likely, unless the Cavs get uh, some nice yardage on this play. So third down and 12 for LP after this uh, final timeout taken by Metamora. And we'll be on the road again next week. On the road again, Woodstock North. And a cameraman on the field. You don't see that too often in high school. No. When there's the players. I mean, yeah. I know they have a video board up here. Right. So I don't know if that's going to be part of the uh, halftime show or whatnot. But. <laughs> Easy don't see a cameraman out in the field when there's players on the field. No. Oh, oh I'm boy. I guess a false start here. That'll move LP uh, half the distance again. Yep. Yeah, you're just so close to the end zone here. Backing up does not uh, help the uh, punter. Oh, it's going on Metamora. Oh, maybe offside. So perhaps. that'll give him a little bit of breathing room. All right, well, that's... Offsides, I guess, encroachment. Yeah, it's got to be. One of their linemen are a little bit uh, excited there at the mm -hmm. uh, near the end. So third and eight now. And a few seconds actually came out of the clock, which is big for LP at this point. 59.3 to go here in the half. Up there calling to reset the clock, yeah. which makes sense. Yep. And uh, the teams are waiting for it out on the field. There we go. I would think the Cavaliers will stick with the ground game here. And oh. they go right back to Ellermeyer. Nothing there. Man of War just probably seen that one coming. Yeah, that was a pretty much of yeah. a guarantee that's what they were going to do. So Cavaliers get two yards on that drive. So LP is going to let this uh, run down as much as they can. There's going to be about 10 seconds. Uh, 13, yeah, about 12 seconds difference in the uh, play clock and the game clock. I guess if you're LP, you let it all go all the way down to one and then call a timeout. Yeah, that'd probably be the smart thing to do. You got to get the snap away and. Oh, there we There's a good away. snap, and Malik gets it off. They're not going to wait. And it's going to take a bounce. Let it go if you're LP. Don't be in any hurry to touch it. And that should be about it. They get it all the way. Very nice punt. Yeah, by that was Malik Madrigal. He's got that nice Cavalier bounce. So Metamora's got eight seconds to play, you know, maybe one or two plays. Yeah. It changes things, though, when you're all the way back at your 41 now. This has got to be one of the worst starting field positions of a drive in this first half for uh, Metamora, as crazy as it sounds at the 41 yard line. Yeah, it's because uh, I know they started in Cavs territory once or twice, too. So. Oh, yeah. So if you're LP, you just kind of go with a prevent defense here. Try to keep everything think, in front of you. I don't think Metamore is going to sit on it either. No, probably not. Yeah, they've run a lot more offensive plays in the second quarter than the Cavs. And Hartnett going to keep it and go down. So getting credit with a QB sack at the end of the half for LP. 
Uh, number 59 for the Cavaliers. That was Creed, Creed McCormick. McCormick with the sack. Yeah, Creed gets go, the sack. Creed McCormick plays a lot, obviously, on the offensive line. So that was all Metamora. But you, when you look at it, you almost think it uh, should be worse than it is. Yeah, honestly, you know, 16 <laughs> points. You know, that's only two scores with two two-point conversions. So right, uh, Cavaliers are, you know, not. Uh, their offense is going to have to work on that, of right. course. They yeah, LP really had a lot of much. things go wrong in the first half. Their starting quarterback got a penalty, got benched. Uh, they've had some, some penalties and a great field position for Metamora. But the Cavaliers uh, are down 16 nothing. But, yeah, you almost feel like it could have been worse. Yep. We'll step aside and we'll come back and have some uh, first-half numbers. Jeremy Aiken, Mike Porter from Metamora High School at 16 nothing Redbirds. Over the Cavaliers, you're listening to LP Cavalier Football on 103.9 WLPO. You gotta call Grazier's. Your water is running. It just won't stop. What do you do? You gotta call Grazier's. For heating and cooling, what do you do? Give us a call. You gotta call Grazier's. We're the ones who can stop the drips. And the drip, drip drops. Winter, summer, spring, and fall. When you need us, give us a call. You gotta call Grazers. 8822111. Come see your friends at First State Bank. There's a certain satisfaction you get when you know you have a friend to turn to. You have a place to go. Year after year, day after day When you need a helping hand, we're along the way Come see your friends at First State Bank Member FDIC Welcome to KC Marketing, your digital marketing agency. KC Marketing specializes in providing affordable online solutions for your business. From graphic design and social media marketing to custom website development. Put the power of KC Marketing to work for you. Search KC Marketing Agency now to get started. Full Circle Industrial knows there are many things that can stop your business cold. That's why they offer a variety of products and services to keep you going. Which of these two pieces of equipment do you think will run the longest? FCI not only fixes your equipment, they can find and fix the problem before breakdown happens. And speaking of cold, FCI is proud to offer these de-icer and ice prevention solutions. Search Full Circle Industrial in Oglesby and see everything FCI can do for you today. Here at Metamora High School, we are at halftime. It's the Redbird 16, a Cavalier is nothing as uh, we begin our halftime coverage on 103.9. WLPO and our halftime show brought to you by brought to you by St. Margaret's Health this halftime show brought to you by St. Margaret's whether it's a break cut or bruise St. Margaret's Health has you covered learn more at about smh.org and uh, the scoring summary well it's all Metamora well, they got on the board at 519 of the first quarter their quarterback who is uh, not you know really fast but very shifty Caden Hartnett a 16-yard run. They uh, added the uh, two-point conversion. That was it for the first quarter, 8-0 Metamora. And one lone score in the second quarter. Hartnett again about halfway in the quarter, a six-yard touchdown run. And again, the two-point conversion was good. And that's it for scoring, 16-0. One turnover, and LP caused it. Well, it was more or less a mistake by Metamora. It was uh, the first punt of the game by the Cavaliers, and it hit a Metamora blocker. Antonio Rodriguez fell on it, and the Cavaliers uh, with that turnover, but could not do anything with it. So there you go, 16 nothing at the half. Bring in my partner, Mike Porter, and uh, Mike, obviously not much, to put it lightly, going uh, for the Cavs on offense. Uh, yeah, offense, the uh, stats are a little uh, not really good, actually. We've had 1-4 uh, passing. Boudreaux had the back uh, pass to uh, Mason Lynch. They lost three yards on that particular play. Uh, the rushing stats aren't all that much better. Ellenmeyer leads the Cavs with 21 yards rushing. Boudreaux has uh, 12 yards rushing. So as far as stats wow. go, uh, that's all we have. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if Boudreaux comes back into the game. But I think the story of the uh, game so far are the penalties. 
Cavaliers have had uh, nine penalties so far in the first half with uh, one, two, three, four, five personal foul type penalties. So those are the 15 yard variety, which are devastating for an offense uh, that are trying to you know gain yards and whatnot. Right. So Metamora has had their share of penalties also. Uh, they've had five in the second quarter alone and one in the first quarter. So six penalties, a lot of penalties in this game. Uh, second quarter was uh, dragged on, you know, because of those penalties. <laughs> but uh, Cavaliers offense has to figure out something in order for them to get back into this game or Metamore is just going to, you know, run them down here. Yeah, the Redbirds will get the ball to start the second half, leading 16 to nothing over the LP Cavaliers. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll uh, check out what's going on at LP uh, High School this weekend with activities, and we'll also get you a Subway scoreboard update. You're listening to LP Cavalier Football If we get as we get past the 9 o'clock hour here on uh, 103.9 FM, AM 1220 LPO. LP trailing at the half, 16 nothing to Metamore. We'll continue with our St. Margaret's Health halftime show after this. Gergovich Family Chiropractic in LaSalle is a proud supporter of high school sports. Dr. Gergovich utilizes the most advanced technology to provide effective care for men, women, and children of all ages. Whether you're getting down in a three-point stance, getting down off a ladder, or getting down on a dance floor, you need a chiropractor on your health care team. Search Gergovich Family Chiropractic today to see all the ways having Dr. Gergovich on your team can help you be happier, healthier, and pain-free. Here as we continue our St. Margaret's Health halftime show as the uh, Metamora Band is entertaining 
Uh, the big crowd on hand tonight at Metamora High School. 16-0 Redbirds with the lead over the Cavaliers. And uh, let's change focus from LP, LP football to uh, other LP athletics and uh, partner. Uh, I know there's some events going on this weekend, not as much as you would think, but yeah, uh, still some events. Yeah, it's not really a busy weekend for Labor Day. Maybe because uh, it's Labor Day. Labor Day probably is. Yeah. You know, more, a lot of people are out for vacation and whatnot. So uh, we have a varsity swimming meet. Uh, the girls are at the Sterling Warrior Invite. Um, so I know that's a uh, really big meet down in Sterling, and they've got a great, great facility there uh, for swimming. So it'll be interesting to see how the girls' swimming team does. Uh, the girls' varsity tennis team is in at the Pekin Invite, so they'll be down uh, here you know, near Peoria f tomorrow for the Pekin Invite. And the girls' fresh soft tennis team is actually has the LP Invite at the uh, LP Sports Complex. So if you're looking for something to do tomorrow yeah. morning, starting at 8.30, um, there's a tennis meet at LP's uh, state, or LP's athletic complex. Um, all those early wake up call to get down, get over to Sterling by uh, it's probably seven fifteen or so. <laughs> knowing Coach McDally, he's going to be there plenty early. So that is uh, your what's going on this weekend with LP athletics, and uh, let's take a check of the uh, Subway scoreboard update. Brought to you by Subway in Spring Valley, Peru, LaSalle, Marseilles, and Oglesby. Enjoy a sandwich made with freshly baked bread and fresh ingredients right in front of your eyes. Subway, eat fresh. Uh, end of third quarter, Amboy Lamoille, 60-8 to eight over River Ridge. Again, that's uh, eight-man football. Bureau Valley is taking on Sherrard, and uh, Bureau Valley leading that one 20-14 with uh, just 2.44 left in uh, that ball game. And we're looking to see if we got, uh, at halftime, Streeter and Ottawa tied at 14 mm. at the half. So oh, that game there. is living up to the billing. Yeah, that's a quite a battle there for uh, those two teams that have 14-14. So Streeter and Ottawa, 14-14 game. Let's see uh, what we got here. St. Bede at last check was in a battle with Erie Prophetstown. And uh, we'll search for that score here. Yeah, and I think that uh, Sherrard game, the Sherrard's pretty uh, good team. So Bureau yeah. Valley, that's a nice, uh, be a nice win for them if they were to pull that one out. Quincy Notre Dame leading Rock Island Alleman in a uh, score, 30 to nothing. To uh, yeah. private schools, they're going toe to toe. And let's see, Hall was leading at last check. Try to find yeah, another, that was the last thing I saw. Another updated score here from Hall. It was 28 to 16 in the middle of the third. Okay. Last I saw with uh, the Red Devils. Uh, the Illini, of course, are in action tonight. Let's see how they're doing against uh, the Indiana Hoosiers. That game was basically a pick 'em. Yeah, I know they were. Uh, Indiana had a pretty decent team a couple years ago. I haven't known what they're doing lately, and I don't know what kind of high hopes Illinois has this year. That uh, second half is just underway. It's 16-10 okay. to 10 Indiana okay. over the Illini. That game is on Fox Sports 1. Is that down in Champaign or is uh, that it's Bloomington? It's in Bloomington, Bloomington Indiana, yep. yeah. Duke leading Temple, a 30 to nothing in the fourth quarter, college football. Throw the records out with those two teams. Oh, yeah. Play. Michigan State leading Western Michigan, 35-13. to 13. Of course, the big game tomorrow uh, is number five, Notre Dame at number two, Ohio State. Yeah, I heard uh, Notre Dame's uh, boosters were not very pleased with the spread on that game, which I believe it's is Ohio to, State by what, 17 Yeah, maybe? it's up to 17. It jumped four points even this week. Yeah, so I know they weren't very happy with that one. So <laughs> well, we'll see what uh, they do. I believe that's in the horseshoe, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, it so is. And I think a tough it's a, one. a prime time game, too, tomorrow night, oh, as you would imagine, yep. under the lights. Oh, I'm sure, right. So uh, we'll see how that one goes. You're listening to the St. Margaret's Health Halftime Show here on 103.9 WLPO. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll uh, go over our uh, second half adjustment.
Ken and Mike Porter back as our first look tonight at Seth Adams, who had a heck of a game last week against United Township. The Cavaliers won the hometown National Bank coin toss and received. So this is the first kickoff, and of course they haven't scored tonight. So right. let's see if Seth Adams can uh, put a good boot into this one here to start the second half. And he does. He gets that good leg into it, but it's going to be just outside of the end zone, taking it about the t 5, the 10, to 15, and 20, and Burrell makes the tackle at about the 30. So let's do our second half adjustment. Everyone needs a chiropractor on their health care team. Go to Gergovich.com to see all the ways having a chiropractor on your team can help you on your way to a healthy lifestyle. Uh, Mike, what do you think uh, has to be done by LP to turn this game around? Yeah, I think the offense has to really have a sustained drive. They really haven't done anything all the whole first half, so just not doing anything. So the offense, I think, has to do something and get uh, stay on the field for a couple first downs at least to give the defense a little bit of a rest. That is our Gurkovich second half adjustment, and here comes Metamora. Oh, that had to be a oh, false start on yeah. there. Right out of the gate, a five-yard penalty on Metamora, false start. As Hartnett clapped his hands, and uh, the, the ball didn't get snapped, but a couple of linemen for uh, Metamora started to go on the play. And uh, that wraps up, of course, our halftime show as well, brought to you this year by St. Margaret's Health. Okay. So uh, Metamora moves back five yards and handing off, and they're going to move. Oh, oh no, they're going to give the quarterback wow, some keep that. The but, deception. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I think Davis is there. glad that he didn't have the ball yeah. because he was wrapped up immediately. And Rodriguez was in the area. Rowicki as well for LP. Back down to the 24-yard line, so they lost another yard. It'd be second down and about 16 for the Redbirds. Well, that's the right direction so far for the Cavs defense. Yeah, moving Metamora backwards. Metamora's offense has had the best of it when it comes to field position tonight. Yeah, and I did forget to mention that the passing game for Metamora was pretty successful in the first half. He was 3 for 4 for 66 yeah. yards, so uh, quarterback's done pretty much everything so far this game. Hands it off, left tackle, not a lot there. Oh, oh ball, fumbles fumble. it. Cavaliers got the ball. Yeah, the whistle had not blown, I don't believe. The ball oh, squirted out. It down. Oh, He's, they are. That's I don't know about that they one. They are that's, calling it down. Wow. Well, I hear some coaches on the other side of the press box. The ball squirted happy. loose, and I guess the wow. uh, is it the line judge right in front of the Metamora bench must have been the one. Yeah, he he was he had his arm up. Wow, he, a tough with break. The second up, so I don't know. That's ooh, that's a little uh, almost the second turnover of the night. Now Metamora is facing a third and long. They did gain a little bit yeah. on the fumble. Well, there wasn't a fumble, I guess. Three-yard gain. And they'll hand it off again. They go up the middle and uh, going to be stopped short of the first down. Look like. Is that Davis again? Yep. And uh, the tackle for LP was made by Medina. And, oh, it's, boy, he got really close. Yeah, it's yeah, fourth and one. I don't know about that. I think. Fourth and one now. Let's see. You would think Metamora would punt it, but they're not showing any sign of punting it. Nope, they're going and for Cavaliers it. Cavaliers are having uh, late substitutions here. Cavaliers got to watch the ball. Nope, and they're they running. And they are going for it, and he's got the first down. So Hartnett gets out to about the 47-yard line. Wow, <laughs> gutsy call by Metamora, their head coach, Jared Grebner, and their offensive uh, coaches. I mean, you're already up 16-0, but uh, they believe in their offensive line, and uh, they came through in a big way with a uh, first down and 10 now out to the 48. Yeah, I think he, they got a really good nice spot on that 14-yard run up the middle. I think that one really gave the coaches the decision to yep. go for it. But uh, Cavs had a chance to stop it, and they just didn't. So a fresh set of downs for the Redbirds at their own 48. Hartnett uh, waits a while and hands it off. Nope, he's oh, going to throw it. Deep. it looks and good. it looks to be picked off by Burrell. Oh, it don't, is. Don't do up oh, there. Oh, jeez. Oh. Another personal foul. They're going to call a taunting on Burrell. Now, it's going to be. Cavaliers will keep the ball. Yeah, but a 15-yard mark off, and uh, he's getting the business from the LP coaches over there. I mean, you could see that. As soon as yeah. he did that, he looked. He, like, stood over the uh, offensive player, yeah. and the uh, referee threw the flag, which was correct. So uh, it will I'm, be a uh, interception, a nice interception by Caleb Burrell. 
And uh, they almost had a turnover earlier on that drive on the fumble, but the, one of the officials blew it down. Yeah, and this is not going to be half the distance, I'm guessing, right? It's going to be 15, no, 15 yards 15 from yards. the 25, so. Yeah. So Cavaliers do get the ball back, and Brendan Boudreaux is back at quarterback. Um, what are they going to do? There we go. Yep, unsportsmanlike conduct on the uh, on the uh, Cavalier player. So and, uh, they've had, unfortunately, quite a few of those personal fouls here tonight, not helping their cause. No, so they would have had the ball, you know, up by near the 25. Now they're at the 12. So, so first and 10, Cavaliers backed up at their own 12 yard line. Boudreaux handoff, there's Ellemeyer with a nice gain. He's out to about the 19. So Peyton ran off tackle a little bit instead of up the middle there and got a good six, maybe seven yards on the carry. Yeah, he was able to get out outside the uh, tackle there, which was a nice run. Yeah, at least seven just inside the 20. And that's what the Cavs did last week. They were getting outside right. the tackles and uh, had some nice runs. So we'll see if that continues here. Second and three for the Cavaliers. And Metamora is going to give LP a first down. Yep. They had a player jump uh, yep. into the, the neutral defensive zone. Defensive player in the end there, jump five, yep. five yard penalty. So the Cavaliers, they have not had many tonight. No, they will take a first down on that one. They're on the 25 yard yep. line. Three minutes in here in the second half. It's 16-0 Metamora. LP with the ball, though. First and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They give it right back to Ellermeyer, and uh, Peyton uh, running hard gets about three, maybe four yards. Yeah, he just gets through that initial line, and then it hits the brick wall on the linebackers. Yep. Yeah, they'll give him three out to the uh, 28. Second and seven for LP. So a big uh, defensive stop for the Cavaliers getting that turnover. Uh, Metamora already up by two scores, and uh, if they would have came out and punched LP right in the face with a quick right. score, uh, Cavaliers would have really been feeling uh, down. But as it is, they're just two scores down, plenty of football left, second and seven. And Boudreaux's going to run the option, and Brendan puts his head down, gets it out past the 30, maybe to the 32-yard line. Still a little bit more running room than we saw in the yeah, first exactly. half. Yeah, exactly. Now it's a manageable third and three, third and four. So, yep. um, you know, instead of those third and eights, yep. nines and tens, uh, this is at least manageable for uh, one of the Cavs' running plays, perhaps. Yeah, we saw Metamora go for it fourth down in their own territory. <laughs> it's been a frustrating game where you wonder if LP would go for it if it's fourth and short. Uh, yeah, finally, I don't know. I mean, they're finally moving the ball forward a little bit on offense. Boudreaux goes back to Ellermeyer, and he's going to be short. So big call here for the Cavaliers. Yeah, it looks like a short two-yard gain there for So fourth uh, and one for LP. Boy, would this be a gamble here. Yeah. Maybe you do a hard count. Wait to snap it. Cavs had some su success last week with yes. the hard count. So. Yeah. So the play of the game so far tonight for LP, it looks like they're going to go for it. At least they come out of the huddle. Fourth and one at their own 34-yard line. And Boudreaux going to keep it. He gets a push, and he's got the first down. Yeah. Nice, nice push job. in the right yep. interior of the line. Those linemen up in the center. Um, we had Nick Belsky in there. Yeah, also up front looked like Adam Lane. Oh, we got injured Redbird. Yep. And Green uh, McCormick up in there, too. So a uh, good push by the interior lineman. Yeah, we'll have to uh, see. Hopefully this player is not hurt too seriously. Yeah, fortunately, this is our first injury timeout of the night. Last last week they were, yeah, they were dropping falling, like yeah. flies. Um, so hopefully the player is okay. He's getting some medical attention. Uh, we'll go ahead and take this opportunity to check a Subway scoreboard update and see if we can get some uh, – Additional scores again at the half. It was Streeter and Ottawa tied at uh, 14. And Hall, oh, St. Bede, 
Six minutes left in the fourth. St. Bede 41 to 20 over Erie Profits oh, wow. Town. So the Bruins look like they're going to move to 2 and 0 on the season. Oh, that changed tr quickly. My alma mater in trouble. The Moline Maroons playing Lyle Bennett Academy. And 24-13, uh, Lyle Bennett over my Maroons. Yeah, Bennett's a uh, private school oh, up yeah. in the Burb, so they're always well known for their <laughs> athletics. So i, I, I got to give my team uh, credit in that, that they're not afraid to go drive no. across the state and play a private league suburban team. So yep, that's definitely. That'll only make you better in the yep. long run. So the Redbird player gets a nice hand as he comes off the field. First and 10 for the Cavaliers at their own 36-yard line. Boudreaux going to pass. Looking, throws, and oh, he has nice. a man. Roman Ole. First down and more out nice to about the 48-yard line. shoulder catch there by Roman Ole. Yeah, first catch of the season for Brady Roman Ole. Speedy 5'5 five five junior. Uh, they tried to throw a ball to him earlier in the first half, but play was uh, defended by Metamora. So uh, this, I think it's safe to say, Mike, no matter how this ends, and obviously we hope it ends in a touchdown, but I think this is our runaway winner for drive of the game <laughs> yeah, so far really tonight. Yeah, you I mean, absolutely. There's still a lot more work to do, though, of course. First and 10, Cavaliers just outside midfield, and there's a nice hard run by Ellermeyer. He gets it down about the 49, maybe the 48 of Metamora, depending on where they spot him. Yeah, it looks like four-yard gain there for Peyton. Second down, and I guess a long six, a short seven, you could say here. So ball spotted just inside the Metamora 49-yard line. We're halfway through the third quarter. Yeah, I think this is the Cavs' only second visit to uh, yeah. the Metamora side of the field. And with LP running the ball, this is kind of what happened. The clock just churns as opposed to that second quarter. Boudreaux with oh, an option. Oh, he's got a lot of room over there. And he's going to be stopped a couple yards short. But, yeah, Brennan with a nice run. Gets it inside the 45 down to the Redbird 44-yard line. It'll set up a third down and two. And what this drive is doing too, Mike, is it's just kind of lulling to sleep. The Metamore crowd, you know, it's just run after run, kind of yep. reminiscent of the old Geneseal days. <laughs> you know, they just run three, four yards at a time. Yep, never pass the ball. All right. The defense honest, but third down and two coming up for LP. When this ball is snapped, there'll be around five minutes to go in the third. And Boudreaux gives it back, oh, first down and more. Allemeyer, nice run up the middle yep. once again. I tell you, the offensive line has got a, quite a push so far in this drive. All the way into uh, inside the 40th of what, 38, so six yards by uh, Ellermeyer on that run. So perhaps a uh, healthy offensive line is uh, kind of forcing their will a little bit on Metamora in this, this drive. I mean, it's it'll wear you down. So first and 10 as LP gets another first down at the Redbird 38-yard line. And Metamore, yeah, they're going to call timeout. They're going to give their <laughs> defense a breather here as LP's had the ball the majority of this third quarter. It's been an impressive drive for the Cavaliers. Uh, they need to finish with points, though, because they trail 16 to nothing, 4.41 to go here in the third quarter. Yeah, there's plenty of time right now, but they're going to get to a point where they're going to have to be a little quicker here on their drives. And down, um, down by 16, you almost, I mean, LP, if they do get a touchdown, Mike, you really, you got to go for two, you would think. You would think, obviously, yeah. you know, we've talked about LP having their uh, good kicker. Obviously, the seven, you know, the extra point should be uh, automatic for the most part. But, uh, yeah, you got to almost go for two here. But we do have some work to do. We're only at the 38-yard yes. line, so first and yeah. 10. So first time out of the half taken by the uh, Metamora Redbirds. 16-0, uh, Metamora leading the Cavaliers. That quarterback and so far is engineering a nice drive for LP. And they're going to hand it off. This time is Antonio Rodriguez, who... Bulls forward down to about the 35. He broke the initial tackle and fell forward. Yeah, so almost about three-yard gain on that play. So the mark him back at the 36. A gain of two, almost three. Yeah, Mason Lynch really has not been a factor offensively no, in this one. No, no. 
I'm wondering, is he even out there right now? I see Billy Minnie, and yeah. Uh, Romanoli's out there. I do not see Mason Lynch. No, I know Lynch, they had the, I think he had an early penalty in the yeah. game, a uh, personal foul, so I don't know if that plays a part here. Um, I never of. saw him get hurt. False start here. Yep. So that's a first negative play in a while against the Cavaliers, but that can be a killer, even if it is just five yards. Moves him back to the 40. And it'll be second down and about 12 for LP. Four minutes to go, and the clock is counting here in the third. Roman only goes in motion. Boudreaux going to run the option and uh, oh, he's still got breaks he's one still tackle up. or two. One Redbird had a hold of his jersey. <laughs> and uh, Brendan gets it down to about the 36. He made up that penalty there. And it's going to be about a third and eight for the Cavaliers. Yeah, he got the yardage back from the uh, false start. And as long as the second quarter was, this third quarter moving right along mm -hmm. here. And four down territory for sure, yep. I would imagine, for the Cavaliers. Boudreaux under center, a shift in the line by Menomora. Boudreaux going to fake the pitch. Oh. And it's going to be a hold on Rodriguez. They didn't, no, call, they didn't it. call it. Boudreaux throws, and it's caught inside the 20. Is that Braxton Simmons, I believe, with the catch? Coming across the field. Yep, 25 with the catch. It Brings like it all the way in. Inside the 20 to what, the 18 yards, so 18 yard. Pass play from Boudreaux to Simmons. Nice pass play, and that's the first time tonight that the Cavaliers offensively have gotten inside the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone, now offering Visa cards with interest rates as low as 9.9%. If you live, work, or worship in LaSalle, Bureau of Putnam Counties, you can become an IVCU member. See more now at IVCU.com. Now there's Lynch goes in motion. Handoff up the middle. Nice gain. Powering his way. That was, that was Rodriguez. Rodriguez. So getting some fresh legs in the backfield. Now looks like a Metamora player cramping up a bit. All the way down to the 10, so eight-yard gain there for Rodriguez. And LP's quickly out of the huddle. Yeah, they were. Yep, they're going to. But, uh, yeah, there was a Metamora player. He's, he's definitely cramping. He's yeah, holding. you can tell he's stretching his leg yeah. there, trying to get stretch his calf perhaps. Yeah, the Cavalier offense has been dominating uh, this drive. Yep. And it's wearing down Metamora. Impressive drive for the Cavaliers. Yeah, this is fantastic. This you know, started all the way at their own 25-yard line. They're now inside the 15. 2.29 to go in this third quarter. Cavaliers down 16 to nothing. Ottawa takes the lead over Streeter, 21 to 14. One minute left wow. in the third quarter. Back and forth game between the Pirates and Bulldogs. I was just told this is a 14-play drive so far with over seven yeah. minutes uh, of time elapsed. So uh, <laughs> this it's is, a long time yeah. in the one quarter there. Yeah, Metamora got the ball to start the second half and then uh, turned it over with an interception, and LP has not given the ball back. And again, the Metamora player down on the field still, getting some treatment from the training staff. Yeah, so, we saw this a lot last week yeah. with the uh, humid, steamy conditions. Uh, Howard Fellows, a lot of kids cramping up here. So, and both teams will get a breather here. Probably beneficial to Metamore's defense at this point more than LP's offense. They were ready to go back up yeah. on the line. Nice pass play to keep this drive alive from Boudreaux to Braxton Simmons. Yeah, and I think that was his first reception of the year. Yeah. And the Metamora player still down on the field. Hopefully it's just a cramp. It, it appeared to be. Right. Yeah, Boudreaux is two for two on this drive for 30 yards. So. Not like it's a swing pass out of the backfield. And uh, he took his helmet off. So he's in some pain. Maybe it's, I mean, the way yeah. they were stretching him out, yeah. it was a cramp. It appeared to be, but. Yeah. It's hard to say now. And uh, yeah, they might actually, now they're actually maybe bringing out the the team doctor. Um, he's got khakis on, so I'm taking a leap. Yeah, maybe that's very, a doctor. It could be. It's a doctor in the house. 
Well, we'll step aside. We'll take a go ahead and take an injury timeout as we get close to the 10 o'clock hour as uh, LP is knocking on the door. They're in the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. When we come back, the Cavaliers will have second and two at the Metamora 10, oh, about 11 yard line. 16 nothing. Oh, you know, he's getting up, so we'll keep it right here. <laughs> After further review, yeah, it's, well, he's walking on his own. There he goes. So he's, very good. Yeah, he's jogging on yep. his own. It's great to see. I was worried yep, there was, for a moment. Uh, it was a little Cameron more. Cameron Davis, he's been playing both ways. Yeah. He was running, playing running back on the offense, so he's probably uh, a little dehydrated down there. So hopefully he gets back in action for Metamora. Second down and two for the Cavaliers at the 10-yard line. Hopefully that uh, break doesn't stall the LP offense. Lynch goes in motion. Boudreaux hands it off to Rodriguez. Oh, Antonio. He's still, he's, uh, yep. Over to the five, perhaps. Fought ahead and got a first, first down. down. Yep. Cavaliers continue to move forward in the uh, IVCU uh, red zone, and they're going no huddle. No rest for the weary here. And Metamora. Yeah. They got Metamora to uh, jump, and L that's going to be half the distance. Yep. Encroachment. So first and goal, they move it down to about the three. First and goal, the Cavaliers will take it. And the clock is running. Two minutes to go here in the third. Just a very impressive drive for LP. Boudreaux under center. Brendan will hand it off. Oh, it looks like he's in. And he is. That's Antonio Rodriguez, who was a big part of that drive. LP with just a grinded out drive here in the third quarter. It ends at 153 of this third quarter, and the Cavaliers on the board. It is 16 to 6. Three yard touchdown run for Antonio Rodriguez. That LP touchdown brought to you by Town and Country Services. Doing whatever it takes 24 7. Plumbing, electric, heating, and cooling for over 100 years. Go to townandcountryservices.com to find out more. So a big two-point conversion attempt coming up for the Cavaliers. Last week they had four extra points and a field goal. So Yeah, this is the first two-point for the year. They haven't – oh, Boudreaux is going to keep it. And he has a blocker, but nobody – oh, there is a man oh, there's open. Someone open. Yeah. Coming open in the backfield was Billy Minnie. Yeah, he had zone. plenty of time when he rolled out to the far side of the field, so he had uh, plenty of time to find Minnie in the back of the end zone for the two-point conversion. So now with uh, – just under two minutes, 16 to eight. That Financial Plus Credit Union two-point conversion, they belong to you and that's the plus. At Financial Plus Credit Union in Peru, Ottawa, Mendota, Morris, and Diamond. And just like that, the Cavaliers are back within a possession. It's 16 to eight. And uh, what an impressive drive. One of the better drives, I mean, I've seen by any team, Mike, in quite a while. Uh, definitely by the Cavs over the last couple of years, for sure. I mean, for the where they were at in this game, for to you know get the ball back from Metamora and run 16 plays, running for the touchdown, and very impressive. 16 to eight, Cavaliers with momentum, a little bit of momentum now on their side. First time, yeah. Been and able their to defense say that is going to be well rested out there yes. too. So, and again, that uh, drive was set up by the interception from Caleb Burrell. Yep. Can't forget that. Yep. So let's see if Seth can put a boot into this one. 16 to 8. What a we're in a ball game now. 153 to go in the third. Yeah, Matt Moore's only had six plays this uh, whole third quarter so far. Matt Moore with uh, two returnees back inside their five. And Seth uh, nope, no gets under it a bit this time. And he'll be taken at the 15. He's at the 20. And a stiff arms a defender at the 20, the 25, 30, and a Ooh, hit big hard hit there. inside the 40. Big and a nice by job 13, by Romanoli. Brody, Brady Romanoli. Yep. Put his shoulder down and just popped him. Big return, though, still. Yeah, for, oh, yeah, they got good uh, field Metamora. position out here near the 40. Yeah, Seth didn't get all of that one. Got popped it up a little bit. So Metamora will get it at their own 38-yard uh, oh, yep, line. 38. All things considered, this is still – not uh, one of their better starting field positions tonight. 
So let's see if LP defense can keep momentum on their side here. It's 16 to eight with 1.43 to go in the third. Hartnett back at quarterback for Metamora. And he's gonna hand it off, left tackle, and there's a nice gain. Mason Lynch brings the uh, ball carrier down at about the 40. Oh. He says he took the ball away. I don't want to be interested yeah. if they called that. I don't think so. The officials aren't going to let that go. I would imagine not. Nice selling job by Mason. Danny Beaver is a sophomore, was there as well. About a three-yard gain on the carry out to the 41. DJ Second and Stone seven. with the carry on that play. Yeah. I'd almost, uh, if you're Metamora, let Hartnett try to run the ball. He's yeah. been one of their more effective ball carriers. Yeah, and obviously you have Davis out with the yeah. uh, cramp, so I don't yeah. think he's back in yet. Second down and seven. We're under a minute to go in the third. And Hartnett shifting around his running back. And oh, Davis he's going to throw back. it over the middle. Intercepted by Bo And just like that, the Cavaliers have the ball back, and they're only down by a score. Second interception, Caleb Burrell. He read the eyes of Hartnett and went Burrell for the second interception of the night. Yeah, and that pass was a little bit behind the receiver, yep. so Burrell was right there, and, you know, the defense is going to have to come right back out on the field. Yeah, see if LP can grind it out again here because the Metamore defense – was uh, put to the test all of this third quarter. We got 41 seconds to go. 16 to eight, Metamora leading LP, but the Cavaliers have the ball back right at midfield. And Boudreaux back under center as they're waiting for the head referee, who's just now getting out there. Both teams are ready to go. And here come the Cavaliers with the first play of this drive. They go right back. Yep, right. Ellermeyer, who gets a push and gets it down about the 47. Gain of a three. Back second and exactly seven. Exactly what they were doing that last drive. Yep. One more play this maybe. half, yeah, perhaps, maybe. or this quarter. There is uh, more time on the game clock or the, the play, play clock, clock than the game clock. Yeah. So they did. They don't have to hike it if they nope. don't want. But Boudreaux does have the play, and he's back in the huddle, so let's see. They're not worried about wind by any means, so no. it doesn't matter which direction they're going. Yeah, that hasn't been an issue in the first two games of the season, playing the wind as far as field position. Three seconds to go, and LP will get the playoff. Boudreaux going to fake the pitch. Going deep, throwing, and it's uh, overthrown. He went for Malik Madrigal, Yep. and uh, Malik earlier in the night got behind the defender. That one, though, just a few yards ahead of him. And that'll end the first half. So the Cavaliers are right back in this game. They score in the third and keep Metamore off the board. It's setting up to be an exciting fourth and final quarter. LP with the ball trailing 16 to eight back with fourth quarter action on 103.9 WLPO after this. For plumbing, heating, cooling, generators, and appliances, think Grazier's Plumbing and Heating in McNabb. Whether you run cold or hot, Grazier's will make sure your home is always just the right temperature. And for those cold winter nights, or when the power's out, and Grazier's does boilers too. Gotta call Grazier's 822211. When you need commercial and industrial equipment repair, think Full Circle Industrial. FCI specializes in rebuilding speed reducers and gearboxes. They repair and rebuild all types of pumps and heavy equipment too. You break it, Full Circle will fix it. The techs at Full Circle have more than 75 years combined experience. Put that experience to work for you. Search Full Circle Industrial in Oglesby and see everything FCI can do for you today. As we uh, move on to the fourth quarter, it's a big third down coming up for the Cavaliers, third and seven at the Metamora 47-yard line. 16 to eight, Metamora with the lead, but uh, the second half, it's been all LP. Yeah, it's something how a game can change just in a few minutes like that. You know, the defense had a big play with that Burrell interception, and look what the offense did. There's a pitch to Lynch, and Mason's not going to get to the uh, first down marker, but... He does get it down to about the 44, maybe the 43 yard line. And it's gonna set up a fourth down and three for LP. 
So a big play here, needless to say. Ottawa now pulling away from Streeter, 35-14. Wow. So the Pirates looking to go 2-0 on the young season. Here we go, fourth down and three for the Cavaliers. Big play here. Boudreaux under center, in motion is Lynch. Boudreaux going to try for the uh, hard count, doesn't get it. There's a pitch to Billy Minnie. He's got some blocks in front of him. Uh -oh. Turns the corner. 35-30. Uh -oh. Knocked out of bounds at the 25. Uh, there is a flag. It's say, coming yeah. back. It's coming back. Oh, looks yep. like there's going to be a penalty on Madrigal. number 22. Yep. I thought there was going to be a block. Oh, and another flag. I thought there was going to be a block in the back. Are you kidding me? Yeah, these officials are being... Uh, Quite picky on what and that was the head referee throwing a late flag. I don't know if it's another on Sportsman like on LP. Yeah, I'm going to guess uh, one of the LP players was uh, chatting with that referee, and then he threw the flag. So I'm going to guess it's going to be the hold or the illegal block and then the 15-yard penalty. So LP is going to be pushed way back here. Well, LP has got to realize that they can't say Although, anything at this point. Uh, they're getting watched. I mean, I guess uh, they could decline one of the penalties. Right. It was fourth down, so. Right. Although, would that give the ball to Metamora? So they're going to have a discussion with head coach Jose Medina, and uh, we'll see how Jose reacts here. I doubt it would be very uh, pleasant. Now they're going to push LP back. So uh, that, you know, LP had everything going good, and uh, this is going to move him back. So they had a first down run by Minnie, but uh, it called back by the initial block in the back of their hold, and then there was a, a late unsportsmanlike call on LP. Yeah, but that's the 15 year Oh, ejected. There. Oh. Is that Mason Lynch? Yep, that was number three. He was talking to the referee, so he must have said something there that uh, he did not like. So, LP's all the way back at their own 35-yard line now, and here comes the punt. So fourth and 25, definitely a punting situation here. <laughs> and good snap. snap was good. Metamore does not break. Oh, nice wow, punt. Madrigal booms nice it. Nice punt. Takes an LP bounce, and it's going to go inside. Let it roll, inside. let it roll, let it yep. roll up there. It goes stopped at inside the 20. All right. LP's got to put that uh, ugly fourth down play with the penalties behind him. Maybe the defense can come up with another big stop. They're without one of their leaders, though, in Mason Lynch. Yeah, this would be a great time to have a nice defensive stop here, so. It looks like along with Caleb Burrell. Yeah, they'll be the back safeties, I would imagine. Yeah. Number seven, it looks like Ethan Pohar is in also. So I haven't seen much of Metamora's offense in the second half, and here is Hartnett. He turns the corner and breaks a couple tackles, and he gets out past the 30. Oh, and another a, late flag. Boy, I tell you. They had big Ben Wallace, and maybe they're going to call it on the big guy. He's like, who, me? Yeah, I'm probably doesn't get too many. Uh, I'm gonna guess that's a hold based yeah, on the down spot on the field, of the... or was it a? So I think he's gonna push Metamora back here. Yep, illegal block it appears. Yep. So Hartnett got some running room, but it'll be called back. So 10 yard penalty, I'm imagining from the spot. And it'll be still first down. Yeah, first, first and five. They do think it's gain <laughs> so yards. Really, yeah, so it was first and ten, obviously, in between the run and the penalty coming back. Five yard gain, I guess. So. Bach has stopped at 10.46 to go. LP has all three of their timeouts. Hardnett hands it Ooh, off. Big hit by in the center there yep. by interior line, I believe. Look like uh, Medina is down there. Also in the uh, mix for LP was uh, Creed McCormick again. Yep. Yep. Big hit there in the center. 
So no gain on the play there. Yeah. Second. Second. Yeah, really no yep. gain. Second Very and little five. Hit. Yeah, second. Put it at the 24. The whistle blows, and LP is going to have to use a timeout. Mm. Wow. I don't think they wanted to use one right there. Well, there might be some confusion because yeah. Lynch obviously was one of their uh, big defenders, and, you know, they had a substitute come in, so make sure he knows what he's doing. Gunnar Skoog is out there, too. Yeah, some new names out there for the Cavalier Yeah, defense. we haven't seen uh, Pohar Skoog yet this year. Oh, now we got the uh, crowd is coming back into the game here. Uh -huh. Yeah, they've been taken out of the uh, game largely in the second half due to the long drive for the Cavaliers in that third quarter. It's 16 to 8, 10 03 to go. Both teams with two timeouts left in the ball game. Right. This is kind of a repeat of last year's game, too, you know. Yeah. Low scoring yep. and uh, defense oriented yeah. here. 14 7 last year, 16 to 8 right now. Two receivers split wide right for Metamora. Second down and five. Hartnett hands it off, and uh, they turn the corner. Big hit. Ooh. And uh, knocked Davis out of bounds. Davis kind of just bounced Ooh. off the defender there. Yeah, the Cavalier player is yeah, Hartman. Up, that looked like Hartman get hurt. Yeah, he led with his shoulder, a hard hit, and he's feeling it as Tommy. And so he's right in front of the Metamora bench. That was a pretty big collision. Yep, trainers down there immediately from Metamora's side, so. Yeah, I think he... Uh, Hopefully just maybe a stinger, but... Yeah, you never know. It was a big hit. Mm -hmm. Don't want to speculate shoulder, shoulder, you know. But yeah, I just don't know. So it'll be a third and one uh, coming up for Metamora. We'll take a quick timeout. We'll be back for this injury timeout as a Cavalier down on the field. Tommy Hartman. It's 16 to 8, Metamora over LP. 9.56 to go. Metamora will have a third down coming up after this on 1039 WLPO. Welcome to KC Marketing, your digital marketing agency. KC Marketing specializes in providing affordable online solutions for your business. From design and social media marketing to custom website development, of KC Marketing to work for you. Search KC Marketing Agency now to get started. At uh, Metamora High School as LP's Tommy Hartman getting a nice hand and okay. a little assistance off the field from two LP trainers. They made a hard collision there with the ball carrier from Metamora. And uh, Tommy got the worst of it. Yeah, it was a big hit right at the uh, line to gain, but he stopped the runner. It'll be third in inches here for Metamora. And uh, Tommy still not off the field yet. Hopefully the officials see that. The back, yeah, the referee does. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there both teams Blows are ready whistle, to go, yeah. yeah. Yeah, let him get off the field. Now we're going to have another substitute in the secondary. And uh, Metamore hands it off. Uh, first down and more, 35-40. Pushed out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Malik Madrigal uh, back in there for Metamora is uh, number four, Cameron Davis, who good to see him back in there. He was shaking yeah, he up was earlier. Yeah, he was out uh, for cramping, it looked like. So they get all the way out to the 45, so... 17-yard gain there by Davis. So you're going to say he got pushed out of bounds back at the 45. So injuries, I mean, have really stopped the momentum of this game. Uh, both teams have had a couple injuries recently. LP had really everything rolling on their yes, side. Yes, they did until that uh, and penalties. two penalties, yeah. yeah. First and 10 from the 45. Metamora with it. Hand oh, whoa! Oh, big hit in the backfield. That was the wrestler, Lorden. The pin. Yeah, he. Uh, that was considered a takedown for sure. So, <laughs> Connor Lorden, 6'4", senior. 
standout wrestler who decided to come out for football. Yeah, he uh, he liked that play. Lost a three on the on that hit by Lorden. And uh, Lorden, of course, did not play last week, so it's good to have 32 out there tonight, making his presence known. Clock's turning down to about nine minutes. Metamoro have a second and 13. Two backs in the backfield with Hartnett. Hartnett going to pass. Oh. Throwing over the middle. Over. Oh. oh, it was off the fingertips. Oh, look at that. And uh, Billy Minnie was there. He was going to try to do his Caleb Burrell impression yep. there and grab the tip, but just off the fingertips. Ethan Pohar was in the area. Yep. But, uh, yeah, off the fingertips of the intended receiver, Noah Karras. And uh, for LP, that stops the clock. That's what you want. Yeah, exactly. Point. You'll take uh, any play stops here. 8.59 to go. Here's a big play. Third and 13 for Metamora at their own 42-yard line. And Hartnett, oh, you're going to run a screen. Pass. And oh. he overthrows the man. Wow. Oof. That was that was very successful yep. the last time they did that. So thank He was looking goodness. for Tyler Cassip. Yep. And again, we'll have to find out. Or a Broderick Shore is actually number 86. But I did mention, and me and Mike were wondering, and if the Cassips are listening back in uh, LaSalle, Peru, yeah, Metamora has a Tyler Cassip. And uh, they also have a coach, an assistant coach, Jim Cassip. And, of course, Cassip, a huge name in LP football lore. So Yep, there's uh, plenty of history there in uh, LP for Cassip. So we'll be interested to see if they're related. So Metamora having to punt it away. And they're angling it towards the sideline. And it'll bounce back into play at the 25. So the Cavaliers know what they have to do. They have 845 to move the ball. Another flag. And this is uh, another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. It'll be interesting, too. That was the first. Uh, oh, it's on Metamora. It'll be the first uh, punt of the game for Metamora. Yeah. So a legal block of some sort. Even though they were our, uh, the punting team. So that's yeah. interesting. There is no block in the back anymore. It's just an illegal block. Hmm. So... I'm guessing well, they said on Metamora, but they're moving it against LP, so... Yeah. I guess it's actually on LP. All right. So Cavaliers now will have 85 yards to go instead of 75. Another penalty on LP. Yeah, that's going to be their uh, the story of the game for sure. So first and 10 LP at their own 15-yard line, 8.45 to go. The Cavs have two timeouts to work with. But uh, a lot of green to cover. And no Mason Lynch in the game. They're going to pitch it to Billy Minnie. And he oh, is brought down. What a play. His, just as by his shoestrings yep. there. By the Metamora defender. That's the play of the game defensively for Metamora. Is that Vasquez back Marshall there. Marshall Vasquez brought Minnie down all the way back to the five yard line. Wow, big loss of nine. On the play, almost eight or nine yards. Yeah, that's going to be a rough one there. So Cavaliers uh, going backwards on this drive at their own seven, second and 18. Ten seconds left on the play clock, eight seconds left, or eight minutes left in the ball game. They go up the middle to try to get some of the yardage back. Look like uh, Ella Meyer back in there. Uh, yep, yeah, Ella he Meyer. gained about seven of those yards that they just lost. So Rodriguez was kind of the workhorse in the last drive in the fullback spot. So third and along 12, perhaps. So LP going to go to the air, you would think. If you don't get it here, you punt because you still have two timeouts to work with. Yeah, you don't want to attempt, I wouldn't think you'd attempt going for it on fourth nope. here. Not this far into your own side of the football field. Yep, just rely on your defense. Boudreaux under center, and uh, he's going to pass. He's got time throwing to Madrigal, and he overthrew oh, him. Oh, Madrigal's got a, he just kind of quit on that route. He's, you know, if he's going deep, he's got to run as fast as he can out there. So he had no shot to catch that ball. So LP will have to punt it away. 
Big stop by the Metamore defense, aided by a uh, big tackle for a loss by Vasquez on first down. 16 to eight, LP is gonna have to rely on their defense to try to get the ball back. Yeah, and this is kind of the same position they had in the first half with uh, kicking deep in their own yeah. end zone, giving Metamora, uh, you know, potentially good, very good field, field position. Bartman and Hartnett are back. Oh, oh. A high snap, a flag flies. Say, a flag, look there. Got to be on the LP. Yeah. That'll move uh, Madrigal even deeper in his own end zone. And uh, the penalties just continue to mount for the visitors here tonight. 15 penalties so wow. far on LP. UT uh, last week had the penalties mount up against them at uh, Howard Fellows. And Malik deep in the end zone. Good snap there. Yep, and they don't bring any heat this time. Another good punt for Madrigal. Fair catch caught oh, yep. at the 44, 45-yard line for Metamora. So 6.53 to go in the ball game. It's 16-8 to Metamora. No, the defense is going to have to earn their bucks here on this uh, drive uh, to stop Metamora to give the offense a chance. Three, tur three turnovers have kind of been negated by the penalties for right. LP. I yep. mean, both of those. Uh, have been negative for right. both teams, but. I know the fans here <laughs> they are excited enjoy. about Washington losing. They just losing. heard that uh, score. Washington's losing 42 to nothing. But I hope they realize how good Kankakee is. That's yeah, the Kankakee number one team, I think, in 6 or 7A. Is or right a up very there. good team. Yeah, so. Oh, penalty flag on the play. I'm going to guess a hold. a hold or a face mask. With the tackle for the Cavaliers uh, was Brett Imany. And it will be a hold on Metamora. Yep. Stops the clock and uh, brings him back 10 yards. Yeah, yeah spot of the foul, so it'll move him back to the 45. Ottawa rolling over Streeter, 42 to 14. That one's got to be near a final. Yeah, I wouldn't Most have expected that point. at that point. No, Streeter led early. Yeah. Well, Ottawa, you know, LP's going to be playing them. Uh, it could be at a tougher Ottawa. game uh, than yep. we thought. Tougher game than it's been past several yeah, years. Yeah, absolutely. First and long for Metamora. Hartnett with the pitch to uh, Davis. Oh, he runs big into. Hit. Look like Lorden again. Yep, 32, Lorden. I tell you, he's earning his bucks on the defensive <laughs> side of the ball. So a loss of one. Back to the 44 now. Okay, well, they're going in the right direction. Yep. Metamora is milking this clock as they should. Well, absolutely. LP's got two timeouts to use, but it's too early to use them. Yeah, no, they want to um, try to save them if they can. Hartnett back in the uh, shotgun. They'll send a receiver in motion, Noah Simmons. Hartnett going to pass. pass. And uh, there's going to be a hold again, I believe. There's plenty of flags out on the play. Yep. It was a completed pass. But two flags in the backfield. Got to be a hold on Metamora. So, yep, <laughs> it's a hold. Two of the officials saw it. and uh, Yep, and that's going to be from spot of the foul, too. Yeah. So. That's going to really bring uh, Metamora back. They're at the 36-yard line, so it could be 10 yards. The first down marker is at the Cavalier 35. So that's 35, 15, 25 yards. Yep, 25 yards. Second down and Second 25. Second and Clock is running, which is the positive for Metamora. Yep, 35. Play clock down to five. Yep, Metamore is going to run each wow, play clock. Wow, going to throw a screen, and it's incomplete. Boy, that was dangerous. Hey, that's good for the Cavs. Stops yeah. the clock. Medina was out there in coverage. So it's third down and 35 now. 
You would think that Metamora wouldn't do anything. No. I don't know. LP bit on that screen in the first half, but not that time. Cavaliers, uh, you got to give their defense credit. They're missing some key pieces out there in the secondary. And Hartman's injured. Lynch out of the game. So uh, Pohar in there, pressed into action. Yeah, they're earning their stripes. Uh, also, Gunnar Skoog, you mentioned him, yep, Mike. Yep, I had seen him before. Third and 35. They're going to hand it off. He's got a lot of, he's got a. Sp and breaks one tackle and gets out. Oh, Caleb Burrell if you're Metamora, brings him down. Yeah, you're from Metamora, you'll take that, getting out to near midfield. Yeah, absolutely. Burrell with a tackle. 15-yard run on that play, but and it still brings fourth and 15. So you'd think they would punt. Oh, yeah. And took quite a bit of time off the clock. Yep. There will be under four and a half minutes to go when this ball is punted. Fourth and about 16 still to go. Let's see if the Cavs can get a return here by yep. Burrell. Yeah, no Lynch back there. He's out of the game. Yeah, they might just run this clock all the way down and get a delay of game. Yeah, yep. I see that a lot in the pros. Mm -hmm. And low snap. And they're going to kill more yep, time. Kill yeah. more time. And it gets off a good punt. Yep, very good. Oh, look at this. And it's going to bounce. Oh, boy, all the way inside the five. Down to the two. So the Cavaliers Ooh. are going to have to do a historic <laughs> drive here to uh, tie wow. this. Well, to even get a chance to tie this one up. What wow. a what a well done play by Metamora. That's perfect execution. Their punter took every last second he could and uh, put it inside the five. The Metamora player let it go and downed it at the yeah. say the two yard line, three yard line. They'll say. Yeah, so, we've already had one drive with 16 plays. Eight and a half or eight plus minutes. They don't have that kind of time this nope. time. So, the 97 yards here. Yeah, this would uh, qualify for drive of the game if they were to <laughs> get it in here. And not sure what's going on. Pointing out yeah, like outside pointing the stadium. Out the field. Not sure what's going on with the officials and they're talking. Is there an issue with the play clock? No, the play clock's going. They're, they were pointing outside Is the stadium. Is there somebody with a light or that's distracting? Uh, Headlights even or something out there? Hard to say. And still waiting here to get back in action. 10.15 is the time here. We are uh, night owls so far this season, Mike. Uh, yeah, there was some uh, Both late of nights. our games have been well past 10 o'clock. I know. I, I pulled in last week at 10.30 to my house. so We will not be getting back to Oglesby at 10.30 tonight. Probably not. No. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not even 11.30. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I don't still know. waiting. Uh, well, there is a real bright light, so I don't know why that's all of a sudden an issue. Right, I, I mean, it's probably been there most of this uh, this evening. Sun going down earlier and earlier. We've been playing under the lights pretty much the entire, well, we have been this entire varsity uh -oh. game. Get out, row. The, get out of the end zone. Yeah, forward progress. Uh, we'll hopefully get back to the line of scrimmage as Brendan was hogtied down. That's yeah, not I don't the know. Well, actually, he did lose some I yardage. Say he's lost maybe lost a, a yard. yard. Yeah. Doesn't have much yardage to lose. Second and 11 at the two. Hmm. And the clock is rolling as well. And the Cavaliers, not much urgency right now. No, not really. They went uh, no huddle earlier, but... Not yeah, right this now. is just such a tough spot to be in. Yeah. Here. And the Cavs don't necessarily have an uh, offense that's made for long, long drives quickly. And look like Boudreaux just maybe kept it up the middle. Yeah, just yep. trying to give him a little breathing room. Yep, one yard gain on the play, so third and ten from the three maybe. 
four. Yeah, LP's looking at this where they got two plays. Third and 10. 16 to eight, Cavaliers have uh, played well in the second half, but um, yeah. barring a miracle here, gonna fall short. Yeah, I mean the defense is, you know, for as little as they've been out there, yeah. they've done very well. Six seconds on the play clock, they're gonna have to be quick. Yeah, two, one, they get it off. Boudreaux, straight drop back into his end, in zone. end zone. Throwing over the middle nope. and incomplete. He had Romanoli out there also. Uh, looked like Skoog, but uh, neither receiver was really close to making the catch. Yeah, Billy Meany out Or Billy Meany, yep. yeah. And the Cavaliers have one last play on offense here. And the clock is stopped with 226. And LP's going to punt. So they're going to take their chances with their two timeouts. Hmm. They figure it's a better percentages, I guess, to punt it and then try to use your – oh, boy. Oh, that one kind of went off the side of his yeah, foot Yeah, it went straight out of bounds. And uh, 20, oof. 22 yard line. So not a lot in the net on that punt. So they'll mark it at the 21-yard line. That's not what they wanted. <laughs> no. So they have two timeouts, but uh, Metamora has the ball at the 21 of LP. Yeah, LP is going to probably call their timeouts, you know, first couple downs here, yeah. I would imagine. At this point, you just uh, you really hope for a strip. You need a turnover. And Harton is going to go under center for, I think, the first time tonight. Yep, they're not taking any chance nope. with a Hands it shotgun off. snap. Off right tackle. LP will call a timeout. Davis with the carry for Metamora got three, but for Metamora, you just wanting to turn some clock. Cavaliers use their second timeout. Yeah, much like, like you said, much last year's game, 14 to seven, and it's 16 to eight, defenses. Yeah, uh, so just one score game on both uh, years here. Gergovich Family Chiropractic in LaSalle is a proud supporter of high school sports. Dr. Gergovich utilizes the most advanced technology to provide effective care for men, women, and children of all ages. Whether you're getting down in a three-point stance, getting down off a ladder, or getting down on a dance floor, you need a chiropractor on your health care team. Search Gergovich Family Chiropractic today to see all the ways having Dr. Gergovich on your team can help you be happier, healthier, and pain-free. So we break out of the timeout. Second and eight for Metamora. Redbirds have three turnovers on the night. Yeah, they just have done well to uh, make sure that those really haven't hurt them at all. And off first man through, Rodriguez, Rodriguez with, with the with tackle. First hit there. Now people will take their last timeout. Another three-yard gain, two yards or so, maybe three. So third and five, but that's not really what's important right now. Nope. So we'll be back on the road next week, and uh, we'll head to Wheaton North. No. Or not Wheaton, Woodstock. <laughs> Wheaton probably be closer. Well, that would be a whole other level of yeah, game that we'd Wheaton be playing Warrenville, if we were yeah. playing Wheaton North. They, I believe, won a state title last year. Yeah, so yeah. I think I think the Cavs would not do well here for that. <laughs> but but Woodstock North, yes, we'll be up north uh, next week. And uh, getting in conference play, of course. Yes. The rest of the way will be conference games, whether they are in their own division or the crossover the matchups. Crossover deal, yeah. right. With Plano being a crossover game. What do they do, two crossovers each year then? Is that the the schedule kind of thing? 
Uh, or was it only one, I Is guess? Is it just one? Yeah, because both Woodstocks, Morris, Sycamore, Ottawa, and Keeneland are all in LP's right. side of the yep. conference. So, yep. yep, just one crossover. Okay. And they match those crossovers up based on the previous year's finish. Oh, I see. So, yeah, like, yeah. Richmond Burton, who won a state title, plays right. Morris. Oh, Oh, is that right? Yeah, so in the crossover, they put the two conference champions against each other. Now, that would be a game to be to see. Oh, yeah, they'll play each other later. And, oh, an LP player's shaking up a bit. Looks like, uh, is that Imany? Yeah, that was a big hit. Yeah, he made a big hit. And uh, shaking up is Brett Imany. So it's fourth down. Uh, there's going to be a little over a minute to go in the ball game. Uh, if you're Metamora here, now obviously if you had a field goal kicker, you would you put it away with a field goal. But yeah, again, you know maybe they don't want a chance a uh, miss snap of some sort. Oh, they're going to call a timeout. Yep, yep. Yeah, maybe they will kick a field goal. Oh. Yeah, a lot of things bad can happen with a field goal, though. Correct. <laughs> so they got it down to one thirteen, and it's not a short. It wouldn't be a short field goal no, no. either. It'd be pretty long. I don't know if you run maybe a screen pass or just a quarterback keeper. Um, I mean, really, if you're Metamora, it, LP obviously hasn't shown the ability to throw the ball downfield. Yeah, so. really, no. They've done uh, you know a couple that's a couple screen passes and uh, a couple passes downfield, but have been called back by penalties. Right. So. so I think you feel pretty pretty good if you're Metamora about even giving the ball back to LP. Yes. Uh, as long as they're pushed back. Yeah, because they're gonna LP's gonna have about a minute left with no timeouts. Right. And again, LP's offense is not necessarily meant to go no. far fast. This is not like Rochester from a few years ago. No. <laughs> Rochester, they could have gotten three possessions in in a minute thirteen yeah. if you let them. Yep. Although I think they lost uh, last week, I believe. Did they? I believe I saw Rochester oh, losing. Oh, maybe to, it was a Sacred Heart Griffin? Yes. Which, that's the big rivalry Correct. down in yep. that area. Yep, and that was interesting. They played that the first game of yeah. the season. Yeah, yeah. Dad beat son, finally, right? And they're going to give it to their main guy, oh, Hartman. He's going to get a first down. Yep, oh. and he's still running, and he's... He's down, but it's going to be a first down. Right, and he was tackled in bounds. Nice job by Hartnett to stay in bounds. Right, stops on the uh, first down, right, but again, right. it's going to start right up again. So. so they can just take knees now. Yep, that was probably the end of the game there. And that's their, uh, Hartnett, again, showing you why he is a uh, a go-to quarterback. He's made the big plays for uh, Metamore tonight. He's ran in both of their touchdowns. Yeah, he's been a stud uh, offensively here today. Yeah, they really only have to take one knee, and this one is over. Victory formation coming up for the Redbirds. Hard-hitting, hard-fought game here between Metamore and LP. And there's really no reason. Yeah, they got to take the knee. I... And they will. Yep, that's it. So another, for the second year in a row, just a hard-fought game between LP and Metamora. And the Redbirds one touchdown better for the second year in a row over the LP Cavaliers. 16 to 8 final score the Cavs move to uh, fall to 1 and 1 Metamore improves to 1 and 1 on their season. We'll take a short break and uh, we'll come back with our post game show here on 1039 WLPO. We'll come up with some final stats. Cavaliers fall short on the road to Metamore 16 to 8. Back with post game coverage after this on 1039 WLPO. When you need a new appliance, think Grazier's Plumbing and Heating in McNabb. Look at this impressive list of brands Grazier's offers. From kitchen to laundry, appliances at Grazier's may just be the best kept secret in McNabb. See your friends at First State Bank. There's a certain satisfaction you get when you know you have a friend to turn to, you have a place to go. Year after year, day after day. 
after day. When you need a helping hand, we're along the way. Come see your friends at First State Bank. Member FDIC.